Hello there and welcome to this, the grand final for Master League 3. For Company of Heroes 3, you're looking at Jibber Jabber Jobber, the reigning Master League champion, his Wehrmacht. And he's up against the ferocious Swede from the north, it's Orange Pest, as the United States forces. I'm A.E. and I'm here today with Vulcan. How are you feeling about this today, Vulcan? Hello, A.E. This is going to be a pretty awesome matchup. Jibber already showing his prowess in previous Master Leagues, I and mean, Orange Pest as well, to be honest. But uh, I think... Vermax certainly going to have a bit of a leg up on this map. They should do. And one of the reasons they may do is, of course, due to the mighty Kettengrad. Roach Tunis is a, one of the biggest 1v1 maps we've ever bloody had. And uh, this thing driving around, capping the points, is going to help out quite a bit. Probably one of the reasons we've had two Pathfinders for Orange Pest as well, of course, just to add some weight to his capping potential. It's interesting to see Pathfinders use. I mean, these days you have to play pay those extra munitions to get the smoke and the utility out of them. It's very useful, though, against MGs, uh, which are very prevalent right now. So I can kind of understand the investment here. Yeah, we'll probably be, of course, seeing the um, utility package later on, no doubt. Such a, a powerful ability for the Pathfinder. It makes the scouts look so weak by comparison, doesn't it? It's why Airborne's been the strongest uh, battle group for the USF in the game uh, in its first three months. Yeah, the beautiful thing about Pathfinders is just their ability to smoke off MG42s in particular. And the recon flare allows them to see what's coming, what you're attacking potentially if you're going to be aggressive. And it's just, it's all around really, really nice to have. But uh, we're probably going to see our first engagement shortly as both sides have captured their initial sectors. Yeah, For no bullets fired in anger yet. It's a very pacifist uh, game of Company Heroes. Maybe they're just capping and having fun, listening to some music on Spotify, perhaps. Oh. I think it's a little bit uh, of a risk for the USF player to relinquish the mid early on. Mm. Because if the... Vermac player can get Grenz into these buildings and control the center. It's going to be kind of difficult for the USF player to maneuver throughout the game. I suppose one thing you have to consider is the fact that he's building his rifles now. He's used the Pathfinders for early capping. You don't really want to assault his USF until you've got all of your rifles together. So Orange Pest isn't too bothered about the Grenz uh, taking strong positions going into the casbah temporarily there and, you know, looking into green cover. Because at the end of the day, they're grenadiers. And uh, they're not that strong. So when he's got his rifles and he's been able to cap fuels as well, we can uh, see on the minimap he's, you know, gotten 2 plus 10 fuels on both sides of the map. That's the strength of what he's doing. Finally going to see some shots fired. Here we go. The action getting going. MP40 package onto one of the grands. We've got the breakthrough. Yes, uh, that's Jibber. right. We have indeed. And uh, Jibber was talking about this as we go to Jibber's perspective temporarily. Uh, about how much he likes Assault Grenadiers in the interview I did with him this week. It's, uh, we're only going to see this once today from Jibber because, of course, it's a battle group terminator format, meaning they can only play each battle group once. But he's decided to start as strong as he possibly can with these MP40 um, Grenadiers. Just closing everything down and forcing it away. You can see the Pathfinders there already having their package with the smoke going out on top of one of those Grens. So Orange Pest definitely valuing that utility. But the nice assault package there on the Grens really getting the better of those Pathfinders at close range. Pioneers, veterancy one already. Yep. Yeah. Trying to put a little bit of pressure onto the enemy fuel. And with a sprint, you can just see how much utility the Grandiers offer. They can build fortifications, they can sprint, they can faust, they can close down and actually kill things, which is tremendous. So indeed, he has gone for training on uh, his infantry um, quarters or company, or whatever the bloody hell it's called in Company Heroes 3. It's uh, this one. Infantry company, indeed. It's the infantry officer quarters has been teched. Just giving him veterans he won already. And, um, yeah. Well, those Grenz getting sliced and diced by the uh, double Pathfinder squad there with a little bit of help from the rifles. But the two Grenz coming in from the bottom side. Yeah, and look at the health peel away from this. 
Rifleman, and they dodge the rifle nade kind of fortuitously there. They then close down the Pathfinders. Jibbo with just an excellent, excellent start. Also, Vulcan, he was able to neutralize this cutoff, however, temporarily. But, um, yeah, Jibbo strikes first and strikes hardest there. I think being a rifle squad down, like usual, like path, like having two pathfinders in this case, kind of makes it more difficult to deal with the abundance of grens. Uh, but he has managed here to force back Jibba for the time being. Right, we do have a motor pool coming out for Orange Pest, however. So he's going motor pool. He is not going for early uh, Browning automatics on his rifles. So showing intent there. Maybe he wants to get an M8 out as soon as he can. And start causing yeah. these grenadiers some problems. Yeah, M8s can be nice early on, um, but they do sometimes become very inconsistent with their main gun. But a nice attack here onto these rifles is going to force them back, and that officer's going to be getting out of that ASAP. Yeah, you can't blame him. You really can't. And meanwhile, Cat and Crad and MG42, an interesting combo there. Pathfinders won't be able to do much about that. There's also a shoe mine on the edge of the fuel point there. But Orange Pest is really struggling at the moment. He needs um, this M8 to, to come out ASAP. Unfortunately for him, it will be out in the next uh, 10 seconds there. And then he needs to get a lot of work done with it. So we got to, let's, yeah. let's check Jibber's build, shall we? We've got a double, a, double MG42, triple MP40 build order. And there's another Grenadier here. Maybe a heal himself for doing people as well. Yes, yeah, so we got the four Grens. Although, did one just die? Um, or was that? Yes, that's terrible casting there. I mean, <laughs> I think that was on maybe the fuel uh, on the side of uh, Orange Pest. Um, his fuel was contested, and I think maybe one of the Grens went down there. Um, his mm. center fuel outside of his base, that is. Oh, yes. Yeah. There they okay. are. <laughs> There's all the poor guys on the ground. casting. There we go. Yeah, but we at least uh, <laughs> thank you for picking up where they likely died. That's, that's a good bit of work. We do have two kills on the M8 in the early going. Yeah, it looks like that just came out and absolutely caught that squad completely off guard. Uh, but these Grens in a group can just Faust this to death, to be honest. Um, he's got to be kind of careful. We're probably going to see an AT gun come out pretty soon if. Uh, Jibba gets his next tech building, but he hasn't man, hasn't actually got it yet, so no, might be a little ways off. No, losing that Grandy is not helpful in the slightest. He's had a great start, however. In chat, they're saying this is an anti-Orange Pest strategy. Uh, I suppose you could say that. It's got the aggression, it's got the double MG42s to really clamp down Orange Pest playstyle, but all eyes on the M8 really now, because the M8 could be the secret for uh, Orange Pest to get back into this. Yeah. Potentially, potentially. The investment into double MG can be punished by the M8, uh, but this is not good news for those engineers as they come very close to being killed off there. Do indeed. MG locking down the south M8 against the Casbah in the center. It's nice to have those Grens uh, in that building. They do get the height bonus over your opponent when you're on top of those buildings in the center of road tunis which is what makes them so strong today is a best of five and uh, the winner will walk away with four hundred dollars but more importantly than that they gain better seeding and better standing for the big finals tournament in july which will have a three thousand dollar prize pool there's a tasty a tasty prize right there <laughs> You do a great job sorting that out for the community. Well, it's their money. So I just sort it out, as you say. Uh, Grenadiers vet soon now. Probably get some pretty juicy bonuses, one would imagine. Rate of fire, accuracy. Harder to hit, allegedly. Yeah, Grens can actually become uh, pretty scary. Uh, if these rifles don't get bars soon, the Grens can, will just keep winning these engagements. Orange Pest has kept his... Um, Kind of plus 10 fuel on the edge of the map for a while now. Um, so he's had plus 20 income for, fu for fuel. Ooh, Pathfinders go down. We've got the next tech building out of Jibber now. Be curious to see what that is. 
Yeah, yeah let's uh, have a little look. We've got the Panzer Company Ooh, down in went base. straight for the Panzer Company. Yeah, so we're going to be seeing Stostrup coming out. Interesting. Sure, it's very interesting indeed. It's crazy. It's Let's... Ostrup at the moment really, really strong. Uh, but they're actually able to frontally walk into uh, MGs with their bed ability. It's really, really scary. Yeah, it can be. One of those, you... their grenade assault as well is just godlike. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Mortar now as well, out of uh, Orange Pest, is going to be able to help shut down some of these MGs and you're actually really starting to see Orange Pest come back into this game. He's regaining a lot of map control. The M8 is able to force off these MGs quite nicely. He just ran straight into a flamethrower. Though. Yeah, that's a well well positioned flamethrower from Orange Pest. Started to turn on the gas now and try and make his way into this one. Uh, but the yeah, engineer's got a difficult retreat path with the Stoss Troop and causing him problems. Meanwhile, Grenade detonates on the northern victory points and there's a great sprint from jibber jabber jobber looks like he's gonna get the wipe there on the grenadiers great work yeah. engineers go down and those grens just getting more and more xp i'm gonna be potentially looking for a faust on this m8 as well orange fest gonna make sure he micros that away and does indeed uh, but the cutoff here being taken from as well orange pest by jibber nicely done yeah, not bad at all. Captain putting down the hurt on the pioneers, but the Stoss Trooper are going to come and tag in for them. M8's gotten four kills, which is not the impact Orange Best would have liked. Yes, there was the Grenadier um, wipe earlier on, but um, other than that, it's not really helped out in many other ways. Once it gets his vet, it's going to become, like, like it did just now, it's going to become a lot more effective, I think. And I managed to take two models off that Gren squad, so another couple kills for it. I'm just really surprised that with the, like, fuel debt that Orange Pest was in, that Jibba hasn't really exploited it by bringing out his own Panzer IV, or, you know, even just, like, buying a AT gun. But M8's making moves again. It really is. It's getting in there. We also have bars as well now. All these rifles, they're competing in the north as we speak, but it's not been the best pop of bars ever because he's had to retreat all three riflemen squads now. Um, it's not, not that good there. Yeah, he's going to regroup and now we will see the, the rifle blob starting. Oh, that captain getting away with absolutely no health whatsoever. Literally, yeah, 17 boy. health amongst two uh, soldiers there remaining. Uh, Sostrid really going to put on the pain though. They do have We've that extra MG. But is that the uh, MP40 package? For the MP44, sorry. For the old Stoss, Stossy troops. I don't know, they could get that. I don't think they can, can they? In the breakthrough, uh, breakthrough you can get MP44. They get floating too, guns. No, you, you don't know what you're on about. It's a floating <laughs> MG. <laughs> yeah, they don't have the uh, MP44s yet, apparently. But here comes the Panzer IV, finally. And he can probably just dive it straight into the base. Yeah, he's going to as well. But unfortunately for him, he targets the engineers. Needs to catch up with this M8. The M8's a nippy little fellow. We'll be able to get away. But look at the pressure that's being applied whilst this is going on. Yes, Orange Press has been able to push north, but he's going to lose his home fuel yet again. Yeah, that cannon ground is, is really, really irritating. If you can't find the kill on it, then it's it's really frustrating. But the M8 has gone all the way around the edge of the map looking for the cannon grad. Meanwhile, the Panzer IV just destroying the medical station, which will be kind of painful, honestly, for these infantry engagements. Yeah, it really and is. You consider that um, we've not even been able to get munition surplus or any um, all the tech upgrades. Yeah, so uh, by medical station. Yeah, Orange Pest is really snookered here. He's been kind of hurting. He's had to get the M1 airdrop, which is never a good feeling. Yeah, and now we see the uh, the cutoff there still not captured back. So he doesn't have any of this muni from the bottom side. The fuel got decapped. This cannon grab just been running all over. Orange Pest in this one, Jibber. Yeah, really look at it. A strong show. Look at it, Vulcan. Just as we're saying that, he's uh, 
going south just to cause more of a nuisance. Orange Pest, fortunately for him, does have this in the north, but he must be feeling shell-shocked at the moment because Jib has been all over him, the reigning Master League champion. Yeah, the worst part now... GG! He's oh, called GG! Cool. There we go. There we go. He couldn't yep. take it anymore. He calls GG and calls it there. And um, that was Blitzkrieg of the highest order. It really was. Very well played. Very well played indeed. Hope everybody's enjoying this in chat and having a good old uh, day out there. Oh, my OBS has reset itself to the old profile. Okie dokie. Fucking, I've done all my hotkeys perfectly. And I closed OBS and it's reset itself to the. before I did them. Oh, you're joking. Oh. Yeah, it was a rough game, but it was an exciting one, um, mm. if you're a Jibba fan especially. Yeah, it was. Uh, it started with fuel debt. <laughs> I think Jibba did a really good job of shutting down the fuel, stopping the bars for a long time. Um, and then um, after that, taking out the medical station left no chance for Orange Pest because he was just going to have a manpower debt from that point on. Uh, not like losing soldiers because he can't heal them. And then it's just over. Yeah, basically. It was just a really nice, well-executed strategy from Jibba. Just a perfect build order, really. Um, the MP40 Grenadiers. And, and I must stress, by the way, although they have the sprint, it isn't... <sighs> It's not the best map to to pull to use them because of course it's a wide open map with long sight ranges. But he was able to use his MP40 Grenadiers by uh, sticking close to the buildings and then sprinting out. Um, and just that spine of cover that goes through the center of the map. He just did a really good job. And then the Kettenkrad was what was capping around the edges. Like it's kind of obvious, I suppose, but the execution of it was was the was the good bit that was uh, yeah really impressive well, yeah you saw like at one point there in the minimap the uh, the m8 went down to kill the uh Kettengrad, but jibber mm. was just on point in moving it back preemptively because he couldn't see the m8 in the base with the panzer force so um it was it was really really well played um the other thing is the grens have the heal at vet one as well which is really nice and is one reason that jibber was able able to save the fuel to get t4 <laughs> like, yeah yeah but... true <laughs> it's very nice it really is yeah that's one of the benefits of taking the officer quarters in the infantry company it's uh it gives you so much utility on those grands it's it's actually crazy yeah, it really is. Well, I've got the game live here, so, well, on replay here. So let's go and uh, check it out. Get everything loaded up. Yeah, all good on my end. Good man. We have M29 weasels ready to deploy. Oh, we got muted again. Nah, Maybe. you're not muted, don't worry. Okay. We're all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all good. I'll play the uh, abbreviated ML uh, transition and let's get into this. Alrighty then, let's get over to uh, game two and see Jibber this time as USF. He's currently 1-0 up in this best of five. Looking to get his second Master League tournament win in a row. And that's a tournament championship win. And Orange Best has a lot of work to do. But he is, I would say... Now, let's just stoke some balanced, controversial debate here. I would say Wehrmacht are the most powerful faction 
in the game right now. And you kind of just about expected to win as Vermat Vulcan if it's like a, you know... I mean, USF are good, don't get me wrong, but I think Vermat have the edge in terms of their, their how dynamic they are, how versatile they are, and, and what they have to offer as a faction. Um, USF are a little bit predictable, I would say. Yep, it's... Uh, yeah, I think at the moment USF is strong, but as you said, they're predictable. They have a couple of strong build parts, uh, one into the M8, which we'll probably see in this game since we've gone Armoured Company. Um, and then the other one focusing, we saw on the Pathfinders and pushing airborne gameplay. But um, yeah, the MG42 right now is just super strong, great map control. I think there's a lot of 1v1 maps that suit the MG42 quite nicely. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's why it's so strong in the current meta. Everything except for uh, Pacino, basically. But. Um... Scout Squad has capped his munitions and then he retreats to base so he can go and cap this munitions. It's a little speed hack, if you will, and it reminds me of the good old days of Company Heroes 1 where this was first utilised and Chipper, of course, started as a fan of Company Heroes 1 high play. Um, kind of with me. I remember him in streams back in the day. Um, he would have been a teenager. I was around 22. We were watching the best Co 1 players back in the day. And here he is, 10 years later, 13 years later, something like that. Now he's one of the best players in the game. Up, in Company boys. Heroes 3. That escalated quickly. <laughs> I mean, if you play enough, you're going to become good at it, right? <laughs> oh, take it away from him. Oh, I'm trying to make out he's a god amongst men. <laughs> he is very good. He is very, very good. Oh, okay. MG42 here. Yeah, doing a lot of damage already. Taking one model off that rifle squad immediately, but managed to get behind the building. He's also got the height mechanics of the Grenadiers in the house there. MG's going to back away, but there's another MG! Of course there is! Orange Pest has two of them, why not? Yeah, instead of going for the early Ketten, he's just gone straight into one Gren, double MG42. <laughs> so, able to cover off one MG with another. And these Grens in that house can hold off, like, two rifle squads and the swing zone. Yeah, but, you know, he's not got this munitions in the south and he's not putting any pressure on this fuel in the south. Yeah. That's, that's the, the beauty difference. of the Ketten Yeah, that's the difference between this game and the last game. Absolutely. Uh, but then he, maybe he heard... This one side. He would have seen, using the beauty of the player list, he would have seen that the uh, the weasel's out there, right, I guess, it's Vulcan. So that kind of limits him. He might not want to go Cat and Crowd if he knows the weasel's being a weasel. A weasel sure. around. Yeah, yeah, it is going to be an early counter. I mean, so is the Jeep, though. I mean, you can still go, like, Armoured Company into Jeep, right? True that. Um, oh, yeah, I mentioned earlier about the... Uh, oh, yeah, we've already got a flamer. <laughs> pushing yeah, I'm shooting from up. ceiling to ceiling. Setting this house on fire by the looks of it. Just about, yeah, the house is on fire. I'll let that mother burn. Height advantage with a flamer, that's gonna be a big goof. We've already got a mortar <laughs> out of uh, the USF player. Reminds me in uh, Command and Conquer Red Alert multiplayer when you build a flame tower. And you start taking out infantry, it's basically a flame tower, yeah. Oh yep. no, the mortar in a bad spot. He picked that up after dropping it from the weasel, and it's, uh, it was only two men, but that pioneer actually needs to be oh, really careful Oh, he gets here. the kill with the MG oh. on the weasel. Orange Pest with first blood here, fighting back with a vengeance. He's also taken the home fuel, neutralized it. That was very nicely done. The trouble is, whilst he is applying quite a lot of pressure here to Jibber, and that is a really good pickup, he still hasn't got his uh, box side mini, um, which is going to be annoying for him. But this MG42 putting on the pressure. Wow. Ooh, look at that grenadier grenade there. Oh. Turning him into meat chunk. Oh dear. We're seeing scout package getting the smoke. Commander? Making sure that those rifles can recover and get into green cover in good time. Uh, but yeah, at the moment, Jibber needs to work out a way around these MG42s with the weasel down. It's going to be difficult. Vulcan, have you come up against the beauty that is the uh, the delayed fuse high explosive barrage for the Morty yet? 
We're losing a strategic uh, point. I have. It haunts. I don't, I don't rate it. Does it haunt? You don't rate it? Oh my god, you haven't seen it used properly yet. When the high level players are using it, it kind of upsets their rhythm so badly. But I suppose we, uh, we're we not on the best map for it. It's a little bit more of an open map, a uh, large map rather, so the mortar has to get a bit closer to be fully effective, unfortunately. But on Fame and Bill. Yeah. That's, uh, we might see a Panther book, so that would be awesome. Could you imagine? All that <laughs> training that uh, Vulcan's done to learn the correct, correct pronunciation of the Panzerbuchse, I believe it's called. Yep. Vulcan might get his full, full uh, reward, which he deserves. Yeah. He does deserve. He puts a lot of effort into it. So. Myself and uh, Lubius have been playing at like 2v2s, and he played a lot with the 2 2 one with the Panzerbuchses, just for the memes, but I know Ronickly found out that it was pretty good. <laughs> it's have a good shot nice value. Right now. Yeah. Oh, after the buff, sorry, I haven't seen it after yeah. the uh, buffs. Is it actually alright now? Not just yeah, the Yeah, I mean, it, it, does, it does decent damage, it's good for shutting down something like an M8 early. The Stummel is still hilariously bad, though, so if you want some meme value, I would urge you to play with the Stummel. Oh, Mortar getting some huge work on the MG here, wiping it, and then the Grenadines have to take it back. That's a lot of health damage. Let's, uh, we'll go check out if he's got base healing in a moment. For now, we'll just have a view at this. We have base healing for Jibber. Do we have it? Yes, we do. We have medical station for Orange Pest, and we also have this beautiful... Akhtarad. Enemy activity near our munitions. Yeah, here it comes, the 8 Rad of Doom. This thing has so much tempo for Vermak right now. And uh, the thing is, like in the first game we saw Jibba go like breakthrough. And uh, now we have Orange Pest going for the other one. I can't remember exactly the name of the, of the battle group. But it uh, gives you a ton of tempo, the mechanized battle group. There it is. Mechanized into Panther, possibly, or spotting scopes, maybe next. Or it's a mechanized assault, maybe. We just don't know. Let's see how much value he gets out of this beautiful Actrad in its natural hunting ground, North Africa. Yeah, Jibber already bringing out the SSF boys, though, with the, and he's going to get his uh, bazookas. Oh yeah. So he's going to be able to start to use that to counter some of these light vehicles. Pretty cool looking dudes. One of our munitions points is that guy's got a Johnson there at the front. Very cool. Is that a gun, is it? It is. Oh, good. Just checking. <laughs> Not talking about his other Johnson. Oh, good. <laughs> Whoa, the 8-Rad <eight> <laughs> being directed by Michael Bay there, making his entrance. Oh, WWF entrance there, and the SSF commandos make their presence felt with the bazookas, hot-swapping them for their machine guns. So Chad, yeah, one, one thing that's pretty rough though is if uh, Orange Pest keeps line of sight on the SSF, he can actually outrange the bazooka with the 8 rad. And if he makes them fall back, he might just chase them into the base. Yeah, yep, here we go. Did a good job there. Out DPS them, but it's a little bit worried about AT grenades, and he has every right to be. They do have sticky bombs teched right now, the rifleman. So yeah, and Jibba has a lot of munitions, so he can pretty much triple sticky this and it will just die. Rifleman advance, the slow advance of someone that's got a present in his pocket and he's not afraid to show you what it is. Talking about that Johnson again now. <laughs> just a sticky, <laughs> a sticky bomb, he calls it. Uh, we got, we've got the 2-2-1 now do doing some work in the south. It's doing the job of the Ketten yeah. at this point, but no upgrade so far. No, he could go for radio antennae, or for the, as we've already mentioned. Yeah, he doesn't need the radio antenna because the Vet 1 on the 8 rad gives him that, basically. Yeah, Map axe, uh, isn't it? It's so good. Yeah, it's really, really good. Really, really good. Building destroyed on Jibber's side. Orange Pest is decisively winning this at the moment. This 2 2 one is actually being a, a nuisance, uh, that's for sure, um, on the side. It's not like the Kedengrad, you know, it can actually defend itself somewhat, so 
It's nice for these sort of flanking side caps. Yeah. Well, as always with glass cannons, DPS vehicles, if you play conservatively with them, you can get so much value over the course of a game. You just don't YOLO them into battle, basically. But, uh... Yeah. Now the vet one on the 8 rat, I think. So he's going to be able to see the enemy units running around in the fog of war, which would be very, very nice. It's very, very powerful, isn't it? Let's uh, check that out. Let's see. Report. The allies have he's going to be using it. And you can see it's uh, radio waves emitting. There's no units right now, but... Well, he's got vision on them, so he doesn't need to utilise it, but still. I'm sure you'll see it later on. Yeah. It's actually really good UI compared to Governor Heroes 2. It's natural uh, advancement and an improvement over Governor Heroes 2's way it dealt with, uh, you know, detecting units in the fog of war, which is a rarity. So I'm, you know, pretty happy about that. <laughs> the uh, VPs here, we've got to pay attention to. It's yeah. very, very far currently in Orange Fest's favour. Not a single point taken by Jibber so far. No. This kind is dangerous territory. It kind of shows you just how powerful the Vermats are right now. And uh, the players have to make sure they win on Road to Tunis as Vermats. It's a very Axis favoured map. With the MGs being so powerful. Or indeed the light vehicles from DAC back when DAC were playable. Um, so yeah, they've got to make sure they win. And then we're going to see what the next map is. But right now, you know, Jibba's going to need a monstrous comeback. Yeah, to make but the bars... Yeah, the bars coming out there. The double bar on both of those has allowed him to wipe that squad. Yeah, he got an immediate squad wipe. Thanks for a very good bar pop. That was great to get them, whip them out in the heat of battle there and get the kill. He's got a long way to come back, though, and he's stopping the cap here with the 8 rad and uh, able to almost kill points. off that pathway he's probably going to chase it till it dies mm. indeed he does it goes. it's a very dead pathfinder now so he's found his last path to say the least um mg's setting up in the north he's desperately trying to get victory points but uh not going to end yeah, well I, most likely i think chipper he really should have probably invested into AT guns rather than the SSF commandos, I think. But lovely Sticky there is going to finally get rid of that pesky 2T1. Oh, well, he had good innings. And here, this rifleman could be very dead. However, he does get the crew shock off, which could save his life. Or maybe the 8 Rad's just going to shake it off and then pursue him regardless. I think he could have done there if he was... I think he's more brave. concerned with just sitting on the points and capping. I think he's just going for the VP victory right now. He's just going to commit to sitting stuff on these flags, stopping Jibber from getting back in the game. Mm. Because Jibber, Jibber does, doesn't have time. He, he, he doesn't have time to build an AT gun. He doesn't have time to build a motor pool, get a chaffy out. Like, they're just, he can't do it. No. 62 victory points now as well. He's got neutral in the center. He's nearly sacrificing the Grandies just to keep the VPs away from him. But the tick with two VPs versus one, well, in this case, not even versus one, versus none, is uh, enough to probably see this game out. And uh, Jib is going to fight as hard as he can. Doesn't want to... Yeah, we'll see. The bazooka coming through here. He's going to catch out and kill the 8-rad, which did get the engine damage from the sticky bomb. Let's stare there. He's going to allow a kill. Well, the anticlimactic explosion at this time. The BP is here still, still really, really bad. Yeah, it's so bad. 32. Got Jaegers versus Captain. He's gone for another 8 rad just to go for an all in on the victory points. We've seen Orange Pest do this before. It doesn't always work, but this time it looks like it might just. Yeah, he's quite simply just got to sit 8 rads on the points, and there is actually nothing that uh, Jibber can do. He, he didn't invest enough into. Like I say, like, yeah, just an AT guns would have been would have been fine, I think. Oh. I was able to get some work off with the delayed fuse mortar rounds there, but GG has been called, and we're one each in this best of five.
Hey up, guys. Um, so yeah, it was pretty, uh, pretty kind of cookie cutter. Vermat being a little bit OP there in games one and two, but uh, it can't stay that way, of course, because the maps change now, and maps are incredibly important for um, faction dynamics. So if they were to change to a more close quarter map, perhaps like Twin Beaches or uh, Feynmanville, maybe uh, there'd be a little bit of variation. Yeah, the bars become so much stronger in those situations. When you aren't able to pin them down constantly with MGs, they and they can flank, it's like really, really strong. Like the, the bars just tear you up at close range, long range, any range, like especially when they get both of them. I certainly do. Let's uh, get all this stuff set up, get the uh, camera shared with Vulcan so he can see the game. I've heard that's quite useful. Uh, <laughs> there we go. That's that one done. Yeah, I hope um, you're enjoying this, guys. A little bit of a, a kind of decent start to the best of five almost feels like in a boxing match when the boxers are just uh, jabbing one another and feeling one another out we might be heading to an all-time classic at this rate or we might be heading to a uh, snooze fest we literally do not know but the aggression in both games was nice it was just they kind of swapped places and it kind of made it look like mm. it was more the faction rather than the players so uh let's I see think how... jibber did make mistakes in that last game though yes Certainly did. Uh, and let's see a field how it evolves on this next map, Feynmanville approach. Could be uh, very different indeed. Let's make sure we've got all the stuff done. Score is now one each. Yes, Echo. Mortars are a must versus Vermat at the moment. And getting the mortar abilities as USF is uh, is pretty bloody strong, to be honest. Really is. Yeah. I mean, he did drop a mortar pretty early from the weasel, so it was fine. And I think losing the weasel was a big problem. Like that was a big mistake. Uh, he really didn't respect the MG. No, no. I mean, what can you do though once you've. Uh... On that map, Road to Tuners, when you're up against a player of uh, such such aggressive Vermax style with double MG support, it is such a tough nut to crack. It's a very tough nut to crack. Let's uh, let's get into the game three then, shall we? Weasels ready to deploy. And here we are. It's now Orange Pest's turn to play a Special Operations Battle Group. And Jibber in the south, as you can already hear, has gone for Luftwaffe. Let's cast from the Vermat perspective, shall we? And uh, how do you expect this to play, uh, Vulcan? Are you aware of this map at all? Have you seen this map much? I have. I have. I have been watching, watching you and your cast on this map, and. Um, I was also giving you some feedback on it the other day in when you were going over it. You've now put the uh, munitions in the top and bottom side, which is cool. Yes, yes we have. We did make some good changes to it, actually, now you say it. So it's munitions are in like a... There's like a, it's like a square of plus 10 munitions. And the fuels uh, basically form a... Like a, a, a different formation there. You've got 4 plus 10 fuels. But importantly now there's uh, safe points on the map and then there's manpower points are the cutoffs. So that's pretty cool. But the best bit about the map is the Easter Eggs Vulcan. You got the sacrifice the sacrificial goats of RNG. <laughs> You've got the uh, dog and cat standoff. Nice. Uh there's any kids watching, they should look away now, but we've got the uh, National Geographic donkeys. <laughs> 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 wow, that one's a new one for me. Yeah. Amazing. 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 Just nature, bro. It's just nature. <laughs> just nature. And it's my hell to die on. If Relic want all this work that K-Pen and I have done on this beautiful map, they're going to have to keep the donkeys. It's my hell to die on, Vulcan. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like in this game, 
um, we are going to be seeing potentially Fauschim Jaegers. We've only seen one Fauschim Pioneer. He's actually built two Pioneers out of the base at the start. Yeah, interesting. Which is interesting. It really but I think is. it's mainly due to the cooldown of the, uh, the Fauschim Pioneers these days. Yeah, but building two Pioneers and a Fauschim Pioneer is very interesting build order. Mm -hmm. Like, that is not usually the done thing. He's completely forgoing Grenadiers, it would seem, at now. Probably because he's going to go for Falsham Jaegers, most likely. Yeah, and we see the second MG out already um, from Jibba, which is pretty standard with Wehrmacht at the moment. It just allows you to control so much of the map um, early on. But not having the, the Grens to really like push with the MGs is a little bit risky. Mm. Yeah, well, it means they don't have Fausts as well, so they leave themselves open to vehicle rush gameplay and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. Mines yeah, are going to be very here. required, but uh, yeah, we now have the 30 cal on the M29. Do some issues, most likely. Yeah, it doesn't want to commit too heavily there, otherwise, it starts getting poked in the side armor and rear armor where the weasel really isn't as strong in the front armor it can actually tank very well and provides really good fire support um, but into the other side and rear it's it's a bit a bit rough sometimes we have lost the sector well, pioneers have capped the plus 10 in the north as well so jibber just showing a great uh, capping ability at the moment orange pest meanwhile hasn't gone for uh, double scouts obviously he can't go double pathfinders anymore because He's already used that command, that battle group once in this series already, so now he's got special operations instead. But that's just shown how uh, how how little capping potential he's had. He's, with the having to build the three rifles, it's taken him a while to gain his footing on this map. And uh, although he does have his plus ten fuel in the southwest here, um, he's lacking on the munitions front. It's interesting that we haven't seen uh, any player go for the. Uh, USF armored yet and go for the M8. It's uh, pretty standard in um, the 1v1 queue at the moment. But it seems like at the top level competitive play, I think uh, relying on more infantry and utility is definitely preferred. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's often a delicate dance of pressure applied and control over the overall map. So infantry, of course, are so, so, so bloody vital to all of that. Absolutely. Weasel's forced away, and we yeah we have the mortar really early um, from Mr. Pest. Yeah, I think as soon as you see double MG, you always go mortar. <laughs> it's like pretty much a standard now. Um, even as like Brits, um, if you were to ever see Brits in competitive play at any time <laughs> ever again, again yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, Rifle's doing an okay job here, uh, managing to get through and uh, apply some pressure back. Uh, to be honest, there's some schools of thought that say Relic probably should have just led with two factions only and made them as polished as humanly possible. And that's what the Master League now has, Vulcan. Two factions only. <laughs> Come on, no one says that. <laughs> oh, somebody did on Reddit, I think. There's no way that's a good idea. Like, the having four factions is has been really, really nice and refreshing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. My Tommy gun, though. We're waiting for bars here on the rifles again. Yeah, Unless he's just so. going to go straight into motor pool. Yeah, he did go straight into motor pool, so we're probably going to see an early M8 once again. Yeah, didn't quite work out on road to Tunis. Oof. I'm not a fan of the M8 at all. I think it's really? terrible. Yeah, I think it's just awful. Like, I think he'd be much better off just um, focusing purely on, like, AT gun infantry play or um, just going for, like, armoured. Hmm. I, mean, I don't think you're wrong. I just think that if he had a strong infantry base already and then he built the M8s, like if he already had the bars and he concentrated on getting the brown, uh, double bars on all of his infantry, then he got the only... M8, maybe that would work better. But relying on it as a shock unit, it's just not going to ever really be that shock factor unit, I don't think. 
I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I just think like um, it just it's so inconsistent. It, that's the trouble with it. Like sometimes you can the M8 will shoot a squad and it will kill three models in a row. Um, if they're like near cover, for example, like this Pioneer squad, for example, if it was stood next to that sandbag and then the M8 shoots it, yeah, it just does two damage like that onto the MG. Like that's one of those rare shots, but then other times it just misses all the time. I think this M8 is going to be godly helpful. It's going to make you look silly. Probably, probably. Yeah. Yeah, mega M8. Mega <laughs> eight. <laughs> Honestly, you just watch. So Just got his MG. Didn't even have it in that engagement. No, seemingly not. Back in base we have Luftwaffe Company and uh, building Jaegers at the moment. He's already got two G43 Jaegers, so maybe this third one will be a Shrek Jaegers. This so was, yeah, this was another thing that was really weird to me, is bringing out the M8 when you've already seen Jaegers. Like, like a Panzer Shrek's going to two-shot your M8. Yeah, true. Well, let's see. I'm just surprised that uh, Jib has gone for Jaegers. Jaegers built, uh, but that just shows you the versatility of Wehrmacht, as I said, in game two. They have so much versatility and there's so many different ways you can play them. It makes them quite a, an exciting faction for that reason. So let's see. Yes, indeed, there it is. The Panzer Shrek. Jaegers Shrek bombs. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Some things never change. <laughs> So we got the MG now on the Falchion Pioneers, making them significantly more effective at range. Very, very nice indeed. Yeah, not, not too bad. Kind of uh, going up against it here. That probably it's quite a bit of firepower. It makes also on the side, but here comes that Panzer Shrek. He's just going to kite it, Orange Pest. He's going to keep backing away and hope to catch it out with infantry or a stray mortar round perhaps. At your disposal. Oh, that Four mortars in trouble. <laughs> yeah, they changed the accuracy profile <laughs> versus infantry. Shot. So if you fire in versus infantry, it does stupid shots sometimes. Yeah, it just goes all over the place, doesn't it? It's really silly. Like the yeah, the trouble is, occasionally it will just hit. Oh, there we go. Nice yeah. solid hit onto the M8. And that's it. The M8's now out of combat for the next uh, 30 seconds or so. Yeah, now we've got the double Jaeger with their Gewehrs pushing oh. off the rifles. Yeah. They're having a bad time. Bar's still not a thing. Uh, it's gas powered. Semi automatics causing all kinds of problems. We do have, yep, yeah, Bar's now teching. They'll be out very shortly on this barracks here. That's going to help out quite a bit. Oh, smoke being deployed on the cutoff. That's pretty sexy. Yep, looks like he's going to try and take that. That's going to remove a lot of this uh, territory. To be fair, he's removing it already as well. He's just he's just taking yeah. it as we speak. So the cutoff's not actually going to do much. And he sees it. He may not be able to take out the M8 here. He goes around the side, jumps in the house, but he's been flamed out. Has to be careful. M8's hiding behind the garrison for now. He's going to need... Through the uh, dance. He can't get it, and you can't attack around. He thought about it. And the Panzer Shrek has now gone sentient that in a show of shame. Micro. Beautiful micro from Orange Best there. Really, really good job. And lovely job with the mortar as well. Probably barraged the far side of the <laughs> far side of the building. As uh, we, we once again see the magical floating weapons. Can now be oh. they await Look at this! Commandant. We're going for... Is this the first two weeks of the game again? We've got the Luftwaffe yeah. combat group, how we hardly remember ye from back in the old days of Come to Heroes 3, aka two months ago. Um, oh, that's it's back on the field, that's interesting. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's going to be able to deal with the M8. It can wreck these rifles very, very easily, and uh, Orange Pest gonna going to find that out shortly. Yes. As uh, very <laughs> fat rooster says, the Beast of Babylon is back. Not quite sure if it's the Beast of Babylon, but we can certainly call it for the rest of this uh, cast. Also got a free um, Jaeger squad with it, so I'm no doubt that he'll go for a Panzer Shrek as well as soon as he gets the munitions he needs. He only has 50 at the moment. Yeah, yeah, this is turning pretty nasty, and you can see that uh, Jibba hasn't even gone for uh, Frauschen Jaegers yet. Right, he went for the verbal 
first. Relying fully on these Jaegers. Interesting build, actually. Yeah, he puts a lot of firepower down there, forces everything away. M8's having to cower behind these tree lines at the moment because uh, it can't really go full frontal for a while. So much uh, pressure put on by this verbal event. We've now got an AT gun out. Uh, the AT gun, though, on this map is going to kind of struggle, I feel. Like, Fameville is quite, quite big top to bottom. And so this uh, verbal event can kind of just go wherever it isn't right now. Uh, I think the opposite of what you just said is true. Um, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, like, from, from the munitions on either side, like how yeah. or, like, wide it is. That's all right. You've done like a million it's better a takes than me in this ca in these casts already, so I'm just happy <laughs> about that. Famineville's actually one of the smallest maps in 1v1 history. Really small. And the oh, okay. AT guns are doing really well on it so far, like dominating really well. In the current build where they can just fire through every single terrain, um, then yeah, these site blockers don't really matter so much. They don't, and even the garrisons in the centre. Exactly right, Vulcan. Yes, mate. Uh, by the way, the bloody using those uh, delay time mega fuse bombs again, uh, which are just really difficult and annoying because you think they have exploded and they haven't, and then you walk into them constantly. It's just annoying. Yeah, I, just, I don't rate them. Uh, mainly because they they don't really do much more damage than the normal. I mean, I think they should do more damage in, in the sense that they are programmed to do more damage, mm. but they don't often do the job. Let's check out Orange Pest Fuel. It's got 65, and where's what's he been spending it on? Second mortar out for him. It's pretty juicy. Two mortars. Double barrage and an MG is going to kill it very quickly. Dude, it's going to like just absolutely annihilate MGs. Enemy infantry firing. Give them a quick burst. You see, the Velvet is managing to dodge the SAT gun for now, though. No sign of a chaffy or anything. I, you know, I suppose he just wants to save his fuel for better things now. He's going grenade package on the barracks as well next. Orange Pest is just kind of happy with AT gun play. It would seem double mortar AT gun and then a really strong cohort of upgraded rifles. But you say yeah. that and then you look at the minimap and you see just how much capping yet again is being done by Jibber. Just eating the, the map up like Pac-Man at the moment. Yeah, own. the map control has been massively in Jibber's favour throughout this game. And he's done a really, really good job with these Jaegers. Hey Quadro with a good point in chat. He's not obviously gonna go gonna go for Chaffee because but double Panzer Shrek Jaeger squad, so that probably mm -hmm. makes him fear going any kind of vehicle by the sounds of things. That's why he's I mean, gonna go for a support weapon based build. Yeah, the 105 bulldozer might not be too bad. Um against the the Jaeger blobs. But um Yeah, I think he's just gonna commit to the AT gun mortars like bars for sure. The yeah. enemy has 300 points remaining. Right, so the thing is, he really needs to get some, some back control back ASAP. Um, although it, the VP situation isn't as dire um, this time around, you know, both uh, players are pretty, I wouldn't say equal, but, you know, it's not it's not as one-sided. No, it certainly isn't. Verbal Vin comes around the side there. We have a surplus of command points available. And he has to be careful. Yeah, he's got to be really careful he doesn't let the verbal bin sit alone without the Jaeger tracks nearby, because otherwise um, that M8 could actually dance around the verbal bin and, and kill it off. Especially now it has a vet, it gets like the increased rate of fire. And um, down there, and it looks like the M8 might stick on it. Oh yes, indeed, he got a good shot. Great call by Vulcan there. He predicted this would happen. The M8 has indeed killed the verbal bin whilst it's out in the open jibber with some huge errors. Yeah. It's uh, really bad news. <laughs> this M8 oh, just needs to find a shot through the gun armor, but doesn't find it. He has to run away because the Jaeger Shrek's turn up. There we go. Save the day. Just about. Bloody that hell. Was close, that was close. Oh, nice bars coming in. 
forcing the pioneers to retreat immediately because if they don't they're just gonna die <laughs> uh, very very quick uh, although these squads don't have double bars yet i think uh, maybe orange pest is waiting for the uh, infantry company upgrade um, in order to buy those with his munitions Stokes out. he doesn't really have much time no no it's just not a bad build. Let's just check out Orange Pest's overall build now. And try. Yeah, he's going for another AT gun. And he's in a kind of grindy World War One esque battle at the moment, but it won't go on forever because it really... Oh, Panzer Shreks have found the M8 out. Veteran C2 gets another shot off. But because the Veteran C2, they survive, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I think it's just it takes maybe three shots. Oh, it, okay. Fair enough. I took, yeah, fair enough. When it's full health, that is. I see. It's three shots when full health. But he only takes like a little bit of light arms fire. Yeah, to yeah. To make yeah. it with it only dies to two. Yeah, I know. Which is why it happens so often. I genuinely thought it was two shots as well, to be honest. But you're right. It's like if there's been any small arms fire penetrations. It's yeah. the, so, I mean, you can see we just, I mean, it's got 27 out of 360 left. It's... Got a paltry amount. The is yeah, keeping them alive is good though. Um, again, the rate of fire is pretty, really nice on that now with its two vet. So, so you're going to continue to be a real annoyance for these uh, Jaegers. Particularly, well, the Jaegers with the Gadeas rather than the Jaegers with the Panzer Strikes, of course. Right, forces Sweet. away the rifles down there, and uh, again, he's keeping up the pressure. The victory point count isn't too far apart, though, mm -hmm. surprisingly, and I, I think he's just been constantly pushing south and keeping that one alive and stopping the drain as much as possible. And you can see he's dying on the centre as we speak. There's the MG, though, suppressing everything. Oh, another hit from the Jaeger onto the M8. Uh, but has to fall back. Now the verbal wind coming back up, and we're going to see the points be recapped. But yeah, I think you're right. I think Orange Pest has been making sure he doesn't get too far behind on these VPs, and has been focusing on capping those first, as opposed to controlling the like the map sectors as a whole. Yeah, he's uh, not had the best getting... resource income, but that's he's gone for a manpower based build, hasn't he? You know, with the support yeah. weapons, and that's mm -hmm. why if Nibelwerfer comes and it indeed is coming next, somebody in chat. Dugamir um, pointed that out. Jibber made great use of the Nebelwerfer in the early rounds of this tournament and expect this thing to do absolute wonders in this game. Vulcan. Yeah, the, the Nebelwerfer can really enable the MGs again because it basically means that any time that the mortars fire, the Nebelwerfer is going to fire at where the, the mortars are and therefore the MGs can just say, stay in good positions and continue to pin down the infantry. And the officer there can really force stuff. Uh, although that Jaeger needs to be very careful up against those bars on the right-hand side. Certainly does. Uh, escaping that. with 66 health there. Got some. Oh, this mine could come in useful now. M8's going to go over the mine, I, I feel. No. Little bit of premonition there. Felt in his waters that he was going a little bit too far into enemy territory if he went past this house. MG. Oh my god. What a combo there. Mortar. And here comes the Nebelwerfer. Yep, straight towards where those mortars were. <laughs> oh, we look go. at that. It's absolutely beautiful. The flame oh. damage. The direct hit there onto one of those squads. That's going to take it out. Oh, and now the AT gun, which is being harassed by the G43 squad, was going to back into flames anyway. So that's been taken out. Yeah, beautiful play there with the Neville Verfer, taking out two support weapons. Stug's going to try and kill the AT gun for if it can be recruited, but not quite. Stug was spoiled for choice for targets. May still get there, mate, because it's backing onto support weapons and the pathing issues will kick the in. <laughs> the pants is lucky there. <laughs> the Stug's uh, front timer is actually pretty gnarly. Uh, so managing to bounce that AT gun. Yeah, I got 210 from Palama. Not too shabby from the Stug. Jaegers versus Scouts in the north. It's constant little victory point battles here and there, keeping the uh, the game alive. But it, ha it should be said... Oh! Hits them. <laughs> Nearly damages the engine of the Verbalvin. Danger close there. 
So we're just going to stand on these points and contest. Hope that one of these Panzer Shreks can actually land on target. Because if it does hit, it will just kill a model. Yes, uh, yeah. Well, they used to hit regularly. Now yeah. they change the accuracy versus infantry as a separate entity to be farcical. Which is pretty, pretty fair balancing. And we will still occasionally get the mean Panzer Shrek to the face infantry kill, which is good. Yeah, just turn somebody into red mist. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Film of Fate. Verbal Vind now has an almighty 12 kills. Just keeping up the pressure here. Yeah, it only gets more and more nasty with that veteran as well. Spoke here actually going to stop that MG covering the rifles from capping that sector. And they bravely AT get gun. their toe over the line, but as Vulcan mentions, the AT gun is watching. And just look at this great positioning with the verbal Vin Vulcan. Victory point lost. Yeah, and he doesn't, I think, have quite got line of sight of it yet, because he can start to fire position and probably will shortly. There we go. Yeah, finds him. It's only one shot coming through, though. And of course, in this build, you can fire through the buildings, which is interesting, to say the least. I don't think it'll stay that way. But it's not yeah, classed as an exploit in tournament play, because how do you police that kind of stuff? You can't. Stokes advancing on it. Does he have point-blank shot? Yes, he does. Here it comes, Vulcan. Point-blank shot. And it's not done anything. And now he's getting taken out by the AT guns. What was that? Sometimes... It's shot. It landed bar, like way behind the AT. Well, that was the point blank shot. How can it miss? It's at point blank range. It costs 35 munitions. <laughs> it whiffs so bad. I mean, I think the play there from Jibber was he was hoping the Nebel would hit the AT gun, but the Nebel completely whiffed. And then the point blank shot just completely missed. <laughs> that was disgusting. Esports ready. Love it. Like, I don't know, maybe he fire positioned the point blank shot. Like, purposefully behind it. Because you do get oh! the frontal cover protection, but there we see a whiz bang. A whiz bang oh, in a masterly grand final. Let's go. That'll be uh, interesting to say the least. Oh, how many support weapons is he against, though? He's only up actually. There's now one MG. I don't. The other one. Did it fall into enemy hands, perhaps? No, just got destroyed. Uh, so he's up against one MG and a Nebelwerfer. But yeah, let's have a look how this will do. Yeah, the other MG is in front. You can see the, the wreck of it, just in front of the, the other MG. But here comes the whizbang shot. Ooh, that's actually going to do a lot of damage. Yeah, he's pushing forward through the fire. Got competing rocket artillery at the moment. There we go. Nothing was killed, though. He just pushed on. Through the fire, and the Whizbang's <laughs> first shot got uh, technically a vehicle destroyed. It must have killed a wreck or something. Meanwhile, Stug's going for the M8. May go for the shortcut. Oh, that's bad driving. He should have gone this way. Oh, he got, got some through the house, though! <laughs> the fire position uh, through the house. <laughs> cheeky, cheeky try there, not quite finding it. And uh, that Whizbang was quite funny. It kind of was directly on target of that Jaeger, but then the Jaeger was like, we're cool. Like it's, yeah, we're fine. Just walk forward. We're fine. Slowly. <laughs> Sidestep the incoming. In effect, they can be very either incredibly powerful and amazing, or a complete whiff. And, uh, oh, or a whiff bang in this case. Whiff bang, yeah. I was going to say. Perfect us. name for it. I think uh, the whiff bang is... Not actually a very good pickup in this situation because, like you mentioned, there isn't many support weapons to really target. There's only one MG left, um, mm. and then the and then the Nebelwerfer, right? But you're never going to get in range of the Nebelwerfer with the Whizbang. So one reason it's really bad is because its range is so short. Yeah, true. But it is a very short map, so it's one of the few. Oh, look at this! Here is finest with a salver from above. They can attack through smoke in Gamera's 3 at the moment. So smoke's not going to save you. Yep, the Nebel actually coming in as well. But a bit late. Yeah, it gets nothing, just smoke and fire. Just pyrotechnics display, apparently. Actually did a marginal amount of damage there. Go for the MG. 
Hey, he got his first kill. Congratulations, Swiss Bank. You're a disappointment to both me and your mother. <laughs> it's so much li little damage it does such doggy to my hands like next to it on the side. It's uh yeah. It's something. That's something. He's got another one! It's a double whiz bang! He's Orange gotta be chilled in at this point. There's no way that he he can't have like Oh my! He can't see how ineffective it's been, and then buy another one. Like you, I don't understand. Hear a, that. You want to hear a conspiracy theory? He just wants to get onto his Wehrmacht game. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants Maybe. to get. Yeah. There's no think... way he thinks this is effective. Surely, but the oh. first one has a, as an almighty one kill in its incredible Maybe career. And he's just area denial. Like, maybe he's just looking to constantly, like, whiz-bang the enemy infantry off these points so that he can just cap them. But here comes skill planes. Yeah. The only area that whiz actually deny is the area in and around the whiz -bang. Like, the actual size the model makes up. I mean, that's area denial, I guess. Salvo here. It's just doing negative damage. No, actually, I think it healed that Jaeger squad. <laughs> <laughs> These are helpful rockets. Now, the retreat bonuses in Co3 are a bit much. They, of course, have a minus 25% receive damage on retreat in Co3. I tell you what, these rifles are uh, brave. Boldly. Yeah, sprinting towards the verbal bin like that and not even throwing a nade. <laughs> Yeah, they're just going to get chewed up, but they might be able to, be able to decap that. AT gun decrewed. Very nicely done. And try and blow that up as well. No more AT gun for you. He is yeah, trying to find an angle on this M8. I mean, Boris Pester showed he's a very high level, classy player. But I just don't think his heart was in this USF um, game. I think he feels countered. He didn't feel like his back was against the wall. He's happy to take the loss, it would seem to me. GG has now been called. And uh, it's his turn to play uh, their match next. <laughs> So orange pest, it's, uh, it's him all over. That is. He played... The only thing he was whizzing towards was defeat. Ho -ho! <laughs> <laughs> the only thing banging is uh, our heads against the wall when he. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly, Echo. With the battle group terminator rules, we are now going to start to see literally every commander that where Vermat have to offer and USF have to offer. So uh, that's exciting to say. In the thing is, Jibba kind of has the the golden bullet because, like, technically, Orange Pest will have next game Vermacht, and then Jibba will have last game Vermacht unless you have some funky rules that and they have to flip or whatever on the fifth game. Hmm. But, no, um, they don't. They don't have to flip on the fifth game. It's the m person yes. with most victory points as of the fifth game gets to decide which uh, faction they play. Okay. Uh. Yeah, so I think that would actually be Orange Pest, right? Because he he basically five hundred nilled. Yeah, looks like that way. Yeah, maybe that's why he took the game three just now incredibly seriously. Because uh, he's like, well, we've got VP lead. Let's go. Let's get get to this game five. Come on, boys. Hmm. Yeah, but I was going to say that uh, Jibba hasn't used the mechanized battle group yet in Verma with the eight rads. True. It's a good so, one to have up your, in, your, in your, up your sleeve, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's uh, exactly, that's what I mean. That's the golden bullet right there. Let's get this loaded up now. 
Let me get straight into it. <laughs> so it's 2 1 to Mr. Jibba Jabba Jobber. But, it, you know, both of these. Uh, Orange Pest, by the way, has never won a 1v1 tournament. Um, he's been competing for like three or three years now, so he's he's very motivated to win today. Not only is there a lot of money on the line, but uh, he wants to finally break his duck, and he definitely doesn't want to allow Jibber to win his second ever tournament today. So rest, don't you know? Don't think that Orange Pest his heart isn't in this because it certainly now bloody is. Attention. It's just are now he's not that bothered line. about the. Uh, Sadly, not that bothered about winning as allies, seemingly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think he had the uh, 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 right, the right idea there, but he just kind of... I don't know. Mortars can be... Like, are the counter to MGs, but they're also kind of pigeonholing you. Mm. As soon as you kill the MGs, like, what are they good for? Yeah, true. I think... Uh... He just shouldn't have gotten deterred from making vehicles in that game. Orange Pest, you, sh you have to keep building vehicles, even if you feel hard countered by the the Panzer Shreks, you know. And you have to keep that pressure yeah. up. Yeah, and I think the M4, like 105, would have been really good there. Followed up by, like, Hellcats to kill the. Uh, Hellcats Stokes. would have been epic, yeah, I agree. <laughs> big, big, big Hellcat fan over here. So let's let's get into game four. No rest for the weary or the wicked. Let's get it done. And here we go, we've got Jibba Jabba Jobba. He's 2-1 up in this series versus Orange Pest, who now, of course, is the Wehrmacht. And I think he's only got one battle group left to choose. Oh, no, he'll also have Luftwaffe. Um, and then he'll have... Breakthrough. Breakthrough, yeah. That's his options. Let's cast from Wehrmacht's perspective. Uh, Vulcan, what do you want to see from Orange Pest this time? have been mustered for battle. Uh, I think, you know, he can he can break through his way to victory in this <laughs> one and uh, just dominate with the MP40s early on, um, kind of like Jibba did in the first game. And uh, that's kind of what I would want to see out of him. We're going to see early double MG, most likely, um, and just get that, that map control going just, early on. I mean, we're just going to see the tempo from Orange Pest here. It's going to be so much more ferocious now that he's motivated. Because he clearly doesn't feel compelled to try and win as allies. And that's probably making the faction dynamics of this best of five and coming here as three in general look a lot worse than they probably are. I mean, Orange Pest clearly, as a competitor here, is just happy to get to his Wehrmacht game. Um which, you know, isn't ideal from a viewership um, perspective, but they, that is the rules of our uh, community tournaments, and it has to be that way for a reason, uh, many reasons, actually. So it's, it's you know, it's his right to do that. And Orange Pest now is very much expect him to be absolutely ferocious, like a different animal, and it will make the faction look even more powerful than they actually are, because the players' motivation levels are differing based on who they play as. Yeah, but I think uh, Jibba here, you know, he's on match point, so if he could finish up the uh, the series with this game, then he, you know, he'll go for it. He certainly will. I don't think Jibba has that kind of psychology as Orange Pest either. I think Jibba is a little bit different in that respect. You know, he will uh, compete with a similar amount of effort, regardless of his faction choice. Yeah, he got a good flank there onto the MG, but couldn't quite hold it. The double grin coming in to... Save the day. We're actually going to see three Grens, and we are going to see MP40 package in Breakthrough uh, from ready. Orange Pest. He's going to get another one out soon. Got a flare coming out over here, just like the uh, Master League loading transition there. Jibber with a, a cool ode to that. Thank you, Jibber. A man of culture. Grenadiers assembled. He's going for this uh, cutoff. Only going to cut off the munitions, though. 
but will certainly slow down the ability to get nades and such out like later out down the line you know those bars and such can become quite expensive on munitions it's like you can compete against the cliffs off from behind this heavy cover so that's pretty fair design to be fair what do you think is poppy field vulcan it's nice isn't it yeah very very nice <laughs> that's, my, that's my take for you. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. <laughs> it's a beautiful poppy field. Thank you. That's uh, what I want to do. The blob now in the center. And there. he's finished the research on the Gren blob. The Gren blob now has infantry officer quarters tech upgrade. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the law because he said we finished the research, but. They're just like veteran C1 Grenadiers, and it says like headquarters. Like, do they have better bunk beds and base now or something? Or like... they're just being drilled, you know? Oh well, okay, if you say so. <laughs> oh, they're being trained. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Like, sprinting into combat with the MP40s, causing all kinds of pressure for Jibber now. <laughs> Yep, at close range, those rifles could have a real bad time. They really are. Look at them absolutely get shredded and falling. Beautiful merge with. there. Beautiful Sick merge. Sick merge, bro. Sick merge. That was really nicely done, though. Making sure that he kept his uh, close range infantry topped up so that he could continue to win that engagement was really, really good. Mortar. Early. Yep. Oof. Early mortar once again out of the USF player. It's funny how poorly the top level players predicted the balance of this uh, patch would go. They all predicted that USF would be dominant and overly powerful. Vermat the wouldn't stand a chance. And uh, that was off building, uh, reading the patch notes and quickly became pretty much. Not the exact opposite, but certainly Vermat's all a more powerful faction. Yeah, I think a lot of people thought that, the, like I said, the M8s would be really strong, and they are, but uh, it relies on you kind of saving a lot of manpower and uh, kind of playing very slow in the early game mm. and against a strong player who's aggressive and uses up all of their resources, you're just going to get crushed. Yeah. Initiating requisition. I'm in a summer holiday in the north here, overlooking the goat, the sacrificial goat of Orangey. Yeah, I want one grin there, looking directly at it, admiring the view. Why not, eh? Let's check out Jibber's overall build Territory order now. Lost. He's got three rifles, captured a victory point. mortar, captain and his retinue, and two Pathfinder squads. Already checked up to airborne. To our yeah. um, so might see an airborne squad come out. Maybe for some bazookas. That'd be nice. It's a good map for it. Why not, eh? These uh, Grens, though, with these MP40 packages, still putting on pressure, but early bars this time. The yeah, USF player. I like it. You need to keep like all that too. pressure on Vermat. I think early bars is like the enemy has do or die, and, and it's what you have to get out, to be honest. So I expect this game to be a little bit yeah. sharp and more competitive. You can definitely get away with it more with uh, your opponent going breakthrough as well, um, because you know that there's not going to be eight rads. Yeah, eight rad, the great bar punisher. Indeed, indeed. Like, yeah, that's why you usually wouldn't wouldn't commit to it early, but in this case, you can definitely get away with it because you need to be able to challenge those MP40s, and it's also just going to play into the late game once these riflemen start getting some decent veterancy. Got infantry training, of course. Munition surplus. There you go for 13 munitions. He gets an extra bar. He pulls it out of his pocket, and this Grenadier is in trouble. He's in danger. No, he's got some backup. Panzer Grenadier is coming in. Grenadier is holding the line behind the tree there, and actually soft pedaling before the hard retreat. This is clever because he does not want a hard retreat down this path. So smart there. Yep. Oh, to get nades onto the mortar, but that. Gren squad is in trouble. The bar's actually doing a ton of damage. Might find a white. Three Not health, white. no oh, health. Did. Yep, they killed. did. And his blood now forms its very own poppy field on the grass there. 
Nice pickup for uh, this Jibber. Is, this is this is the USF play that we needed to see. Yeah. Makes all the difference going bars. And the battle group terminator format as well, of course, eliminating the 8-rad. Um, means the bars do have a window of opportunity. Yep, and you can see he's using that pour it on him ability from the rifles there to get even more damage down. And uh, the extra rate of fire and suppression is just really, really nice. Yeah, it's, it's really powerful still. And, um, yeah, Panzergrins are going to be a little bit of a problem for these rifles once they start getting better at sea. Uh, but for now, the rifles will continue to dominate these crates. Certainly will. Here yeah, for a Stug now to add some back bones to his forces because it has to be said that Jibber is uh, currently winning, I would say. He's got big, big capital wipes at this point in time. Here we go again. Pour it on him. And another squad. And that Gren is not having a good time. Two models go down. The rest will manage to get out of there. That last guy is sprinting like crazy. Can you blame him? That's a dude coming out. Yep, so uh, very nice pickup. Rifleman, even with low health, they've got a good bit of heavy cover there, and the Grens don't know what to do about it. Stug is out, but we've also got an M1 dropping for Jibber now. And I'm just really Victor fancying Jibber's build control. order. However, he is now going for the granite grenade upgrade, which means any vehicles from him are going to be very slow onto the field, having gotten all upgrades from the barracks building. We see the shot coming in onto the Stug. Now he's just got to try and do that whilst getting a sticky bomb on it, and then that's <laughs> going to be a very dead Stug. The uh, MG though getting really far up here. This is an aggressive push from the MG42. As soon as that stops though, the more is going to barrage it. Yeah. It's had the most. Uh... Oh, could be some juicy nades. Those officers got stuck on the fence there. Yeah, that could have been juicier. They, they shouted, Ooh, wait, those crowds are pissed. That's the. <laughs> Um, probably some of the worst voice acting in Governor Heroes history, I would say. And my impression, by the way, was pretty accurate. I'm going to say that, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Come okay. on, Cletus! we got to run! <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, those grand season coming well there to cover that. Capture that point. It's not that important though. For him Look to at this right dissipate now. the Grenadier's health with the poor on ability, the double balls. That's some DPS, that is. That's it is. This, especially since they're considering they're retreating and they uh, get that damage reduced. But uh, yeah, nice push off there by the bars. Yeah, it's really good work. And now he turns his attention to this Panzer Grenadier. He could also go for the cutoff if he wanted. The thing is, I feel like the USF player is still on a bit of a like a time uh, limit here, and he needs to make sure that he's contesting these VPs more. I think early on, otherwise he's going to run out of time. The uh, Vermac player will build up his Panzergrens. He'll get the veterancy on them. They'll start being charging into his uh, rifles and picking them off. And these AT guns really out of position right now. Yeah, terribly so. These Panzergrenadiers had. Just, uh, have the company here as two profile on Sturm Gewehrs. It would have been done for both of those AT guns, but there's a lot of infantry in the way here on the retreat path. Okay. Enough done, however. Meanwhile, MG's yet again forced away by the mortar. Okay. Yeah, so Jibber here, he's got to be really careful not to 1v1 with his rifles. Um, otherwise, like, he'll get them picked off. Like, Panzergrens will 1v1 bar rifles at this point. He needs to make sure that he's double teaming everywhere. Pathfinder's pushing out at the moment, both sides of the map. Keeping the victory point situation roughly equal. And, uh, let's have a think where Orange Pest goes from here. He does have his 
Panzer Grenadier Company, Infantry Company, no sign of his uh, Mega Panzer Armory. Yeah, but Orange Best has just kept this uh, VP lead throughout, even though Jibber had so much pressure there for a while. It's kind of fallen off now, I feel. And uh, when the Stug the starts getting its like point black blast and all, like basically the, when the vet pops on the Panzergrens on the Stugs, it's going to be bad news. All that Pathfinder is looking quite dead. Yeah, he's incredibly dead, Vulcan. Uh, bereft of life, he is Another certainly an ex Pathfinder. <laughs> right. Bard Rifles are looking to make an incursion here. The Mortar gets an excellent shot off on the Grenadiers. That would usually mean Orange Pest should retreat, but he's fine. He wants to stay in the engagement. We've got Panzer Grenadiers joining the fray. Poor on and utilized, but suppression kicks in firstly. And meanwhile, we've got uh, the victory point being contested in the south versus the captain. Never uh, again, coming out. Yeah. Looking for the counter battery onto the mortars and potentially kill off some AT guns in the process but that MG very low and does get taken out this could be a steal this could be a steal we've got sprinting MP40 Grenadiers though will he get away with it you have three command points yes he will yeah nice, nice steal there. that's that's exactly what he needs he needs to like really break down those MGs um, one thing that I like that Jib has done, or hasn't done, is buy a second mortar. In this case, um, he's managed to get the job done with one, and that's perfect. Yeah, he's done a good job there. Nice. Ooh, they're path. retreating through flames here, this could be terrible! Look at this rifle, look at his health! 73, oh, 58, no. 40, 30! Oh, he just about survived! One model survives! The first shot! From that Neville Vertha went out, like the flames went out on it just in time. That was a beautiful Neville strike. No, it was really smart from Orange Pest. All these support weapons are cowering in fear now. Such a good faction there, Matar. So much utility, so much variety, so much dynamism. And they're really. Really starting to hurt the USF. Despite Jibber, by the way, having an excellent game at this point. Orange Pest has kept the victory points. He currently has a triple cap. He's not even bothering to cap the munitions. Just capping the victory points, then going back to base. Because he knows his build order. He knows the power of the Wehrmacht at the moment. So, not even bothering to cap the munitions. Just keep the victory points. really surprised that Orange Pest hasn't bought the officer training yet. Uh, for the uh, Panzergrand building. Yeah, that's a good shout. Get 25% increase in veterancy climb rate for the Panzergrenadiers. Some, they are very, very tonky with veterancy. Well, yeah. The nice thing about it is it gives the Stug one vet, it gives the Panzergrenadiers one vet, the Panzergrenadiers get the sprint, the Stug gets the point blank blast. It just gives so many nice abilities to these uh, Vermac units. Not the as good of a needle worth a barrage this time, but the, the big win for Orange Pest is in victory points at the moment. He may have actually been out tacticked by Jibber at certain points in this game, but his overall strategy has been expertly executed. There we go, Pendergrens. A close range. Gonna be doing loads of damage to these bar rifles. Now the second one being double teamed, and that is not what he wants. Sprinting MP40s into double bar squads with a stick grenade assault, but easily dodged there Lovely by split. the jibber. Yeah, great split. Seems like we're commentating on Olympic gymnastics all of a sudden, and the stug goes in. Some good attritional damage down on the AT gun. Oh, oh. here. Ooh, this is interesting. This is very is this interesting. Command tank? Yeah, yes, oh, I thought that was a tiger for a second. <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh, the Mamamand tank. It says Mamamand. You see? <laughs> the Mamamand! This thing, like, buffs defensive capabilities of tanks at close range, right? Yeah. It doesn't actually have any offensive buffs. It's got an array of auras. 
Yeah, I think it's Aura's defensive, though. Like a, uh, like a high school locker room. It's got an array of auras. Something quite pungent. Links Africa. Everything coming omitting from this uh, Maman tank. <laughs> oh, the three vet runs. Mm. Yeah. Oh, they're Tasty. shredding, dude. Absolutely shredding at the moment. Where's your double bars now? <laughs> well, you did call it timing window of the USF. Look at that range! Oh. It's actually good anti-infantry capability with this little stubby gun. Well, it's not about the size of the gun, it's how you use it. We do, Did that just kill the mortar crew? I think it did. Let's have a look. The mortar crew's no, dead. No, retreated. There it is. Yeah, it's just one man. Oh, so he's, he's not even map. got the mortar! It destroyed no, cause, cause, the weapon. Yeah. No, it's because he like two men, right? No, the weapon's uh, destroyed. You can't pick it up. This is a medic. Yeah, he destroyed the weapon there. Nice. Hellcat's good, good counter somewhat. Well, to, to be completely honest, it's bugs. Sometimes when they get decrewed by tanks, they um, get destroyed, but not in the traditional sense. But it's like an AT gun, right? It's not like an MG. MG's coming through with one hell, one man, and mortars can't. Mm. A lot of DPS going down right now. Panzer Grenadiers are in peril. Yeah, they friendly fire there. From the, mm. <laughs> From the Panzer IV. The Maman tank showing his true colours, clearly. <laughs> oh, point blank Nebel barrage. Throwing oh, fog straight into his face. It's going to be some tight dispersion. Completely flaming off the far side of that. The there. Grins are getting pushed off. Like all of this infantry is getting pushed off. It's going to be causing quite a lot of manpower bleed on Orange Pest after all of those engagements. Might be a chance here for Jibba to actually take back some VPs. Well, he's only got 82 of the buggers, so he needs to work fast. Yeah, and he needs he to does. be decisive. Orange right. Pest in both of his Vermac games has been, has been incredible at controlling his VPs. He has, he really has. He's got such a VP lead. He's going to go into game five should he win this game, which certainly looks like he's about to. He's going to go into game five with faction choice and likely be able to pick their match, which seems to have been his plan all along. Mine about to detonate. Ooh, that's a damaged engine on the Hellcat there. Will he be able to take full advantage? Does he have anything? Yeah, he wants to kill it with the command. Panzer four. Will he get the kill? Here it goes. Hellcat doesn't have much armor. Oh, lovely nade there on the side as well. Takes out three models from the Here's my man tank. Oh, oh, so little health remaining. 60 HP. My man tank needs one more shot. Go oh, on, son. Go on. Oh, you missed. Oh, I missed. No. <laughs> now we're going to see the stickies kill it, right? Yeah, double stickies gives him engine damage. Maybe the Hellcat strike back. He himself has engine damage. Oh, he's taken out there. Destroyed. Oh, there you done. go. He pulls no. another Mamand in immediately. Can you blame him? And the Nebel's been countered. Wonderful play. Feynmanville finally showing us some good plays today. As the players kick in with a bit more aggression because, quite frankly, Jibber doesn't have a choice if he wants to win this game and finish the series off at this point. He's gone in for it. He needs to cap that boss side ASAP. Just get on the flag, please. Why? <laughs> <laughs> what oh, is this tank on the bottom side? Another commander. Command Panzer 4 coming in. Oh, yeah. nice fight. That could be a wipe indeed. A lot of DPS being done. The Stug's going in. Still has this point blank blast. Maybe it won't miss this time. It's out of range. That's yeah. such a short range. Meanwhile, in the south, Mamand is just watching over the victory point down there. And we've got a cap coming in the centre. This will finish the game off if it wasn't already done for. And there's that Hellcat. If he could see it, he'd kill it right now with the Stugly Cop. Point blank blast right there. Just decimated that rifle squad. 
down to their last oh. 25 points. Yeah, this is just over. Triple cap, 20 points, no chance. Three victory points every three Why seconds. You, okay, just, just before the end, why do you call it Maman Tank? Oh, because like um, it says Mamand on the UI. Oh, when it scrolls across. It's not some like uh, oblique reference to the Wehrmacht <laughs> and their nomenclature of 1943. Well, you see. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is what it is. GG. Well, there we go. Yeah, fortunately, I feel like Jibba kind of missed his window there to take control of that game. He never got ahead enough in VPs, even when he had control of the map. There is the possibility. There is a possibility here that Orange Pest is a better company of heroes player than Jibba. And mm -hmm. he's just trying to win on his Wehrmacht games to get to game five. This is Orange yeah. Pest thinking, and I've I mean, cast Orange a lot Pest. with Orange Pest, and he likes to think of himself as better than Jibber Jabber Jobber on a raw mechanical level. So mm. just thinking as him for a brief moment, there is a very big possibility that he's like just churn through the games here to get to game five to just win as his Wehrmacht faction. And get it over and do it that way, which you'd think if he is that much better than Jibber in his own mind, why can't he just try and win his allies? I guess, but um, I mean, he contested the VPs enough in the other games, so mm. oh, they weren't fake games by any stretch of the imagination, but he didn't put in anywhere near as much effort as he should do as allies, especially with the double whisk bag play. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> double whisk bag, I mean, I'm not re this isn't some mad conspiracy theory. He literally went double whiz bank and got two kills with them. So <laughs> Yeah. I wonder what they'll get the G three uh, the G five rather map because the best of five's gone all to the fifth game here. Um Yeah, and that's another point, Echo. That's another point. I'll bring chat up here. Echo's made a great point. I think Orange Pest just wants to win his first tourney. And and to be honest, this is kind of the most brutally efficient way to do so he's not tiring himself out as allies he's deduced that Wehrmacht are more powerful and he's made sure he gets the VPs when he's allies so he's got choice you know it's 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 not the best to for YouTube comment sections because they're all just going to be saying Wehrmacht OP and they are slightly OP but they're not this OP I think this is kind of accentuating the imbalance a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Player like the the players are limping a little bit here on on USF. Ooh. Although I think I think Jibber there had like the the best example we've seen so far of how to counter Verma the if they're not playing right eight rads. Like yeah, if you if you if your Verma player doesn't go mechanized then you can you can get bars early and dominate hmm. that's what you should be doing definitely definitely should be uh should I drink two red bulls in a day or would that be bad for me uh your doctor probably wouldn't recommend it okay should i drink a beer after drinking yeah. a red bull two hours ago and i've currently got covid i think so would a beer be good for me right now? It would probably mask some of your symptoms. I like it. Thank you, Dr. Vol... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but would it be healthy? <laughs> this is not... Okay, just, just for the chat. This is not medical advice. Just just put that out there, all right? <laughs> What beer have we got? Oh no, he's definitely a real doctor. 
I mean, didn't you just listen? <laughs> didn't you just hear his sage medical advice? <laughs> <laughs> what beer did you get? It's... I'm gonna. I need to judge you. Well, it's in honor of King Charles, who has very large fingers and a very happy wife. It's called Bishop's Finger. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know it. Oh. There you go, Vulcan's yeah. not judging me because I bought one of the superly sugary middle-aged man beers instead of one yeah, it's of just the... A, it's just a classic ale. Mm. I've got a nice beer in the fridge, actually. Why do you go get it? Ah, I don't fancy beer right now. It's game five, mate. Is this like not a... have a beer for game Wait, five. Is, it, is, is this a... Uh... <laughs> Is this a tradition? Do you always crack open a beer for game five? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what are you what All are right, you I'll, go, I'll go grab a beer then. I'll go, there you it. go. It's a super we'll professional gaming stream. Go get a beer, bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Veteran crews have been made available. Is this the right version of the map? The one without the... Uh... Yeah, I think it is. Is it? No, it's not. They're playing on the wrong version. Damn it. That'd be funny. The third Legion, best Legion. Alright, I am back. Let's, uh... Crack over my beer, shall we? What do you have? Let's all judge him based on... I've got... This is a beer that was brewed for International Women's Day. Okay. It is stereotypically called Embrace. <laughs> <laughs> it is a apparently a rhubarb and hibiscus sour ale. I'm going to have to mute the stream because I have such a controversial joke. Hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm unmuted. There we go. <laughs> Someone's gonna lip read that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, a rhubarb and hibiscus sour. I, I don't know what it's gonna be like. My friend brewed it because he's a brewer, and he said it was all right. So, and he gave me one. So, <laughs> this sounds like a nice guy. Well, it smells nice. Bishop's finger was good. <laughs> it's like realize what it looks like on camera. We do that. <laughs> oh yeah, they can't see the can. No, <laughs> they were just like gently like. <laughs> it's like when I was talking about my uh, still division decks the other day, and I said I needed all the deck. <laughs> right, let's. All right, there it is. It does. It barely even looks like beer. What is that? It's a sour. Have you ever had a sour beer? I have had them. I had them in America and stuff. Yeah, they're weird. The weird beers. Have I shared the screen with you? Can you see the screen? Oh, such one nice. Um, no. I'll do that next. Uh. <clears throat> So many things to remember. I think we're ready, lads. We're ready for G5. Orange Pest Jibber. Who is going to be the champion of Tiddlywinks 1997? Let's go. Hello there, and your eyes do not deceive you. Orange Pest, who we believe had victory point choice. Maybe we were wrong, I'm not sure. If he's gone for USF. I will say that USF are pretty damn strong on this map, Twin Beaches. So maybe that uh, plays into his thinking. And get this, Vulcan. He's up against Deutsch Africa Corps. Jibber-jabber-jabber yeah. in one of the most important games in his life. 
has gone for Dak. Wow. This is just the Giga Chad move right here. He must have something up his sleeve, right? Some sort of secret strat. Secret Dak strat. By the way, Orange... I don't know what it would be, though. Mm, no. Orange Pest, by the way, was the guy that popularized Dak in tournament play. He made them seem viable at multiple points in time in ML1 and 2. But um, he has pronounced them dead, Vulcan. He said they were dead on stream in this interview before this grand final. So Jibber, with the ultimate mega giga chad move, has gone as Dak. Dak. And uh, let's see if he does have something up his sleeve. Yes, he's gone triple pioneer. Um, so he's probably just going to be focusing hard on getting eight rads out early, I would assume. Um, he'll go mortar into mortar half track. Oh, sorry. Half track into mortar half track later on, probably as well. That's what he's going to be relying on. Maybe we'll get to see some flamethrower in the half track plays. <laughs> ah, clown car possibly, yeah. yeah. Could be exciting. Yeah. In fact, that is exactly what he's doing. He's going for the kill. And we will, of course, have Dak as our uh, side of choice in this game. Why not? <laughs> Here we go. Uh, but yeah, on the, on the side of the USF, um, Orange Pest uh, took that armored battle group, so we're finally going to be seeing the M8 strategy. Look at this. Forcing these meek rifles to reposition, keeping the fuel in his position. And more Panzer Pioneers. He's Panzer Pioneer spamming right now. He's gone for. Is it. Four or five? Does the one inside the 250 count as one? I think it's just four. No, oh, yeah, four. yeah, that's this one. Yeah, that makes sense. But he is going for five. Yes, Jimmer! <laughs> it's a spam strategy in the G5 okay. of a best of five grand final with so much pride at stake. Orange Pest vying to win his first ever 1v1 tournament after three years of trying versus Jibber, who won the one last month, ML2. Um, and Jibber is making himself a big crowd favourite here by doing something pants on head fun. Yeah, this is... He's probably going to go two Flamers, three Granat Buxa, like if I were to guess. Because the Granat Buxa is actually really strong at breaking down rifles if you have Sorry, you're them. saying some German right now. Say that again for me. Grad the grenade launcher. Oh, yes! It's a really good strategy. So uh, if team games have more than two maps, I'm sure you'd see loads of that. Yeah, it is a big thing in in uh, 2v2s, actually. Yeah, yeah I don't sure. doubt it. I don't doubt it. But these pioneers, they can actually, it, you know, with their numbers, um, can put out decent DPS at range. At maximum yes. range. Strangely, they're a worker unit that are a long-range specialist, which is, I'm pretty sure, a first for Company of Heroes. Correct me if I'm wrong, chat. If you've ever seen a worker unit have a long range speciality, I don't think we've seen that before. So, this indicates, of course, that uh, Orange Pest has gone for armored. He's got the veteran sea crews, meaning this Jeep uh, is starting at Metro C1, meaning he can cap. And there's the clown car. The 250 has the flamethrower on. And so, I don't think these rifles have grenades, but he's worried anyway. He's being careful. And those uh, pioneers are standing their ground. Oh, here we go. There's the sticky. Now, people are saying rear rationals and combat engineers in chat. They were medium range special. They were what about medium range the units. Panzer Elite in uh, the, They weren't working units. You just started with Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, the combat engineers weren't as good. Mo their modern Nagants weren't as good as Conscripts long range, I'm pretty sure. Neither were the rear rationals. But uh, Panzer Elite were, uh, they say, they, they were their front-line unit, the Panzer Grenadiers were, so... Yeah, but you also built the base with them, right? You did. They were pretty much everything. It was pretty interesting. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Quadra says, Rear Echelon, we're good at dying at range. Does that count? So, yeah, I think Panzer Pioneers are the first unit, work unit, that is a long-range only specialist. Which is a really weird dynamic. And it's difficult to get your head around fully. It has like an inverted profile, I believe, or it's like really toppy at the far range or something. Uh, yeah, interesting. 
So yeah, build order wise, it is, go on, Vulcan, your turn. To it, yeah, it is only at max range that the pantheon is very good. Us. If they get too close to the bars, then the bars can actually do a lot of damage. Well, their rifles, sorry. Stay <laughs> over there. We're trying to shoot you. <laughs> oh, this is one nice thing about getting the half track out early from back is they do have that heal ability that has been extended in the latest patch. Yeah. So you're able to full heal your squads now. Mm, looking quite well there. We have vehicles available in Jeep, reserve. meanwhile, attempting to get his third kill. He's gotten quite a few already. Let's check out Orange Pest Field War War and all. Just classic USF style stuff here. Captain's retinue. No doubt we'll be getting munition surplus mm -hmm. soon into bars, etc, etc. It all lies on the DAC in this game because uh, seems they've been able to hold their own. They get crew shot temporarily. Yeah. Jibber actually on point here with the unloads, uh, just making sure that he covers off the half track as it retreats, uh, so that it can't be like chased down. Although in this case, you know, it doesn't doesn't really matter. In that situation, he could have easily kept the pioneers inside. It's just in case he gets caught out by like a sprint, maybe from a rifle. Uh, I really, on. I really just like they call them light carriers in Command Three rather than half tracks. Half track is World War Two gaming. That's what you call them. It's a half track. They're not a light carrier. Anyway. Uh, Jeep's going to cause some problems here. It's going to go around the side and pick on the MG, but it was spoilt for choice in terms of objects to fire upon. 250 goes in and reverses back again. Meanwhile, here comes the Akrad from the Mechanized Company. I think it's because in German, it, like, it's Sonderkraftfahrzeug, right? Which is a um, special motor vehicle. It's not called a half -ride. True, true. Oh, takes out the MG34 there. Oh, we should just call it Sonder Croft then. That's so much more uh, accessible. Um, here we go. We've got the Jaegers. We've got the Actrad. This M8 needs to be careful. This could be a game winning all in push here from Jibber. But the M8 has it scouting. He's backing away as quickly as his wheels will carry him. Yeah, the timing has come through now. We're going to see. Panzerjäger, which can kill off the uh, cheap goes down, but yeah, the Panzerjäger can put a lot of pressure onto this M8 with the help of the 8 rad. Um, then we'll have a, probably a second 8 rad pretty quickly, or maybe a Marder. Let's check out the SE. Does indeed have the grenade package for the barracks building. Looks like the bars are just gonna. Oh, sorry, the rifle's just gonna push off. The Panzerjäger, which forces the 8-Rad back as well, because without the Panzerjäger there, the M8 will beat the 8-Rad. So he can't just uh, stay there and continue that engagement. He needs to get a second vehicle out at this point. Our fuel point is being neutralized surprised, to be honest, that Jib has not been able to cap more of the map with his vast swathe of... Panzer Pioneer Infantry versus Orange Pest, who has five capping squads minus the Jeep, which no longer exists. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, and an MG. Of course, the USF doesn't have one. So I'm really expecting more capping potential from Jibber. It really speaks to Orange Pest trying his absolute hardest in this game five, exerting maximum pressure on the battlefield that um, he's been able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe, in fact win so far and we have a chaffy the chad little m24 on the field it's going to go in for some of these light vehicles now he's been scouted already though so you should see some yeah they're reversing away already look at that jibber's got it scouted he sees it and he reacts to it like a yeah. sentient human being marder asap is ah. now coming out it needs to be there as like uh, like as soon as he got the manpower the second vehicle had to be the marder now the, the chaffee is, is in play the marder and the m8 together can still very much run down the m8 so the timing here is a little bit rough i don't think that jibber can necessarily commit the marder till he has a second one oh. seems like game five is the first game of the series almost I really feel like we're finally getting the grand final we wanted. 250 taken out by the Chaffee. First blood for the anti-tank light tank, which is such an interesting vehicle if you think about it. Yeah, it's nice. Very nice indeed. I mean, those 250s might get like upgraded later, so taking them out is, is always a good thing. 
It must be noted, by the way, Orange Pest has 500 victory points. His victory point control this yeah. tournament has been insane. Insane. His map control, his ability to apply pressure on the map and his opponents is just godly. Um, really is an impressive player at times when it comes to stuff like that. Finally, for the first time in this game, we're seeing points drop down from Orange Pest. Yeah. He's already contesting that top side flag again. Another in position. Getting into a better one either way. Yep, an M8. How many kills does this badger have? He's got four and one vehicle destroyed. There's one of those uh, really tasty shots that did a lot of damage with that one hit. Takes those Panzer Pioneers down to two men, did tons of health damage, but needs to move away as the Marder comes over. Chipper's looking a little bit foolish and reactionary at the moment. It's like mm -hmm. he's reacting a little bit slowly to Orange Pest, who does seem a step above in terms of activeness and micro mechanics at the moment. Jib has gone for the awesome strategy, which has won a lot of fans over, but Orange Pest's overall effort and Ability to control the battlefield. Oh. Nice nade there. Cr shot. Crew shot, but the eight rads here to cover. Here comes that Chaffee. He's against two vehicles, and it's feeding time for the M24 Vulcan. It's feeding time. He's been trying to block him. We've got the M8 coming in as well. Oh, this is so close. Yes, he takes out the Marder. Can he now take out the eight rad? This could be a big engagement. The eight rad needs to get the penetration. Oh, he can't get it. it. What an attack by Orange Pest. M8 to the rescue, taking out the 8 round. What gameplay from Orange Pest yeah. this game. As I mentioned before, Jibber can't... He can't commit the Marder without having a second. Like, like, like look, look what he's just built. There's the second Marder. Yeah. If he just waits, like, a another minute, then he's in a position where he kills both of those vehicles. But instead, he lets Orange Pest have... Sadly, 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 sadly for Orange Pest, the DAC vehicles don't cost very much. And he's queued up two additional Marders. Yeah, but he needed two before. And now he's off tempo, and he's behind on BP stuff. So, it's not good. Because every minute that passes by, Orange Pest gets closer to m 8 And with both of those vehicle kills, that's a lot of experience. So I'd be, I'd be curious how close he is to those M8s, if we can look at the tech tree. Yeah, sure, let's have a look. Uh, orange pests, Bill. Uh... Oh, he actually went all the way down the left tree first. Yeah, he's gone for... Yeah, war Machine. War Machine? Manpower cost of all vehicles is negligible <laughs> now, apparently. So you can destroy. And then, of course, we have the Sherman. Easy 8 as an option later, which I'm control. sure he'll be going for. Very powerful. That's another seven CPs away now, though. Yeah, it takes lost. a while. Which means these martyrs might actually start to dominate the field. We're starting to see the first Granat Buxer. There we go. We've got three Flamers, one Granat Buxer. So much utility and damage. Look at that! This is <laughs> Super powerful. long range grenades. Yeah. That Modern Warfare 2 all over again. Is that the you talk about like noob tubes? Yes. Halfway across the map. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> That's a classic. That is awesome. So much fun. So much fun to be had. Here we go. The little Marder battle group. Here we go hunting, protecting the 250 for now. Yeah, that 250 unfortunately got an engine damage, so it's going to need to be fully repaired. We'll have to be back in the They're fight, but having this many on. pioneers is uh, pretty nice. Breach! The mechanic we paid $60 for. Incredible stuff. There you go. <laughs> oh no, he's got to commit these CP caps, man. You can't, you can't just let these VPs go down. He's now triple capped against him again. And he's just bleeding VPs in a game where he doesn't have the late game. Like, he's not playing Vermac, he can't sit around. Here comes those Marders. An impossible shot gravitationally off on the Chaffee there. Vet 2 M8 just pokes in and gets some vision. Meanwhile, we've got another M8 here. Just chilling. Watching over the yeah. rifleman. 
The enemy has lowered our so he can just go for this like light armor play where he just like overwhelms the modders with his own Utility light armor. Particularly Chaffees would be great. But um, he's gone double M8 instead of double Chaffee, which is a little bit riskier because Marders can kill M8 very, very quickly. They certainly can. Well, in order for that, they have to be in position, of course, and the M8 are uh, speed demon. Able to kite around the battlefield. That is in the hands of good players, which is what we're experiencing here. Going forward, M180 gun built the hard way from motor pool. But those rifles have the. Upgrades, upgraded uh, Brownings, giving them excellent DPS. You can see the problem that Jib is having right now, though, because he's gone for such like a manpower heavy build. Double MG now as well. Like he's got so much fuel spare <laughs> that you just can't spend. I tell you what, the double MG so far can. I expect them to have a lot to uh, show for. Let's see if he can push and finally take two victory points because. He's had a real tough time keeping the VPs this game. Yeah, he's kind of going back to a somewhat Vermax style play <laughs> with Dak instead. Uh, these grenade boxes can actually do damage to the Chappy. Got a nice side hit there, the Panzer Boxer as well, doing plenty of damage. And managing to force that back. Good work, good work there. And uh, is the DAC army is being pressurized at the moment. Everything pushing in from Orange. What a shot from the M8. May destroy one of these Panzer Pioneers. Meanwhile, he's advancing on the Marder. He wants to get past it. He can finish off the Pioneers with the rifles. He focuses them now. Two Marders picking on the M8. So M8's going to have to go south. It suffers a rear hit. Down to 60% health, he gets an 18 aid off, saving the M8's life. Meanwhile, there's been engagements in the center, rifles pushing in there, and an M8 causing problems in the north. So that's just a great assault by Orange Best on the way to winning his very first 1v1 tournament after a three year campaign. Yeah. He's just spent his, uh, his cash um, jibber on getting, I think it was the repairs for his tanks. The upgrade because he had like 400 ish manpower. Oh no, he's gone for the upgrade to Tech 4. There it is, Panzer Army Command with a K. So late. Like, why would you? I'm not confused. <laughs> I feel like Jibber's like throwing doing this. I thought he'd, he'd, he'd chucked it into upgrades so that he could get his modern more health. That would make oh. way more sense. M8's now just. This one's gotten a lot of kills. The other has already gotten so many. Eight and two vehicle destroyers along the way. It really feels yeah. like from a north position, you really can't push as easily. Oh, finally, looks like, yep, with the Panzer Jaegers, he's going to try and cap the victory point here, but I'm sure one of these vehicles is going to react soon enough. That building just can't... I literally cannot believe that play. Like, building Tech 4 there is just like giving Orange Best the victory. Yeah. Like, you, you want to put that manpower into upgrades so that these Marders aren't so squishy. And then just build another Marder so you can start one-shotting the M8s and, and, and uh, Chaffees, right? Yeah. If you have three Marders next to each other, you, these these uh, light vehicles just get one shot. Yeah, tugs and rounds are so important. It's just really, really rough right now. I don't think Jibbo really had the right plan here. I mean, I, I kind of rated the initial Panzer Pioneer start. I thought he would go more Granath Bookster because you can utterly wreck these rifle squads with them. But so Orange Fest, I mean, to his credit, has uh, elicited a you know, classic USF style here. He's committed to Panzer Three. Mm. Again, without upgrades, Panzer Three is a kind of meh. Yeah. Oh, big shots from the Chaffee. Pushing in double Chaffees, taking out the Marders. He's going to escape with the first one intact as well, and the Marder pushes forward. Orange Pest on his way to winning his very first 1v1 tournament. It's come in a kind of a strange series, to be honest. I'm not going to hype it up unnecessarily. It's been a, an odd one. But it's come nevertheless, and you can't take it away from him. He's got his name on the slate of 
uh, tournament winners in our community's history. In this. Yeah, Orange Fest throughout this series has been in, in really, really good, especially around VP control. Like, it's he's he's focused on playing the objective, and that has won him like at least a couple of games in this series. And it might even win in this one. Yeah, I just. Uh... Oh, nice kill there. That Chaffee needs to zoom out of there ASAP. Run, little Chaffee. remaining, but he's dead regardless. Panzer three proves his worth, but he's on 63 victory points now. That's oh, not this good. This is so tight, and every second that goes by, we're closer to M8. Must be pretty close now. I mean, yeah. Jibber's on nine CPs. Orange bests, he's on five. It takes a while to get the Sherman Easy 8, but he, as you yeah, say, if you he don't did go, go all the way down left stream. Yeah. So. Exactly. Oh, he's gone for another Chaffee, I just heard there. Yeah, so Chaffee spam in this situation is perfect because he got ahead of the martyr. Mm. Like, 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 losing that first martyr, like, literally is the worst thing that could have happened. Yeah, there was a time when Jibber was in this game. And that all-in push with the M8 and the Chaffee, taking out the Marder in the way he did, mm. that one in the game, it's been downhill since then. And uh, just well played to Orange Best, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he's just he just held held that lead. He took the lead. He saw that the Marder was overextended. He, he picked it off really, really well played by Orange Best. Big mistake by Jibba. And, um, yeah, he's not letting go. He sees, he sees that victory. He sees his first 1v1 tournament victory. It's in his grasp. Yep, the writing's on the wall now for Jibber. He's trying to cap the victory points, but this Panzer III, I tell you, is having a decent outing. It has a lot of kills, but it's finally taken out. Ah, the Vet 3 Chaffee's destroyed by the newest Marder. The only Marder. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he can just keep trading into Marders. It's fine at this point. He just needs to sit on these victory points until he wins. Yep. Mine detonates. Yeah, the mine doesn't. Issues. And the worst part is the mine doesn't matter in this position because, like, he doesn't have Panzer Grands. He's got Panzer Pioneers, so the grenade package is not there, and he can't finish off the Chaffee. No, there's nothing he can do. Panzer Pioneers die just north of your picture. Here comes the Marder for a moral victory only, because 12 victory points remain. As they tick down, yeah, he gets a kill with the actual uh, Panzer Jaegers there. But, um, yeah, the right is on the wall. The victory points tick down. There's nothing he can do with his infantry. There's... He's putting an M180 gun on the victory point just to make sure he finishes it off now. GG is called. And there you go. Orange Pass wins his first tournament. And we have a new reigning Master League champion. go and um <laughs> if only you guys could have seen my cam during that <laughs> I, think I, was my, I was just heading my hands like this for most <laughs> of the game it's like as soon as jimbo like lost his first martyr i was just like <laughs> oh no <laughs> here we go <laughs> it just got worse and worse and worse yeah oh that was rough that was rough it was rough. It was an interesting series from a factional kind of dynamics, but it wasn't the best uh, best series I've ever seen by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, sometimes grand finals can be like that. I'm looking at some of the um, spoiler alert, by the way. I'm going to show the uh, replays up in chat here. Looking at some of the replays and the replay lengths we've got. I mean, Theodosios versus Pravity, 2 megabyte replay file that's huge um can't so yeah spoiler alert we'll cast some of these series of course so look away if you don't want to see the results but yeah some interesting series out there for certain just always the, a bit of a curse 
at times with the grand finals that they uh although we did go to all five games it definitely feels like um the players were kind of feeling like they've already understood the faction dynamics to the point where you know they're playing around in in the overall meta game of the best of five within uh, against one another yeah but until that last game right <laughs> <laughs> Which is just really weird. I, I mean, I don't mind the deck pick, but you gotta, you gotta understand your limits. Was like, like the initial eight rad timing was great because he was low on uh, manpower mm. from from investing so much into Panzer Pioneers. He couldn't go second eight rad really quickly because if you can put like one eight rad out uh, one after the other, you can get so much tempo as Dak. But because he was late. The Chaffee came out, and then he goes Marder, which is fine. But he needs to wait on the second Marder. You always wait on the second Marder in those situations. You can't play off one Marder. Otherwise, it just gets disco circles around it by the Chaffee. Mm. Orange Best blames the uh, Battle Group Eliminator. Uh, I'm not sure, Orange Pest. <laughs> I'm not sure, bro. I mean, the the thing is with Jibba, he had, if he was playing Wehrmacht, he could have played um, Mechanized. Like, what's like what what happened there? Yeah, I think Wehrmacht <laughs> have three viable battle groups as well. You know, like yeah, they really do have three viable battle groups. So, I mean, admittedly, US, yeah, and US has three viable battle groups as well. I don't mm. get the problem, to be honest. All of the battle groups are viable for Wehrmacht and USF. I'm sure there's certain ones that are more powerful. Yeah, I think SSF is not that great right now because Bazookas have always been shit. Yeah, Al Alpern's <laughs> right. I mean, oh, and Brits as well. Brits only have the two viable battle groups, I believe. The one with the cruise, the AA. Crusader. Yeah, Indian Artillery Armoured. Yeah. What's, I don't, like, what's I the can't other even one, name the, the other one. <laughs> special forces, like special. No one uses it. Yeah, it's the Indians no, and the Armour. Air, air, air Sea battle group, whatever it's called. Um, I don't know. I think I think Centaur is a oh, good. Oh, Centaur, yeah, 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 true. Uh, no, Centaur is actually yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So, the thing is with Centaurs is they can kill tanks. It's like the Stug, uh, the Stug E from Dak. It can actually kill light vehicles quite effectively. Mm. Like a Stug E can kill an M8. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's been uh, it's been a good series. I really feel like we're building quite nicely towards the big finals, where the players probably will go all out every single game, most likely. Um, Royal Air and Sea. There we go. I knew it was something like that. That was it. Thanks, Nathan Degree, and thanks for calling us all plebs yeah. as well. That's uh, much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> We have uh, a lot of results uh, entered from uh, Stern Panthers. A big thanks for that. Let's check them out now. All of these uh, moment for show claiming back his MLR that he lost from losing to Nick Nagano. He, he seems to unfortunately have to lose to Nagano every single week. <laughs> it's a bit of a shame for him, really. Um, we've got Happy Cat beat Noob Nay 3 0. Oh, no. Noob, what happened? Oh no, come on, Nath. Barton beat Jack 3 0. Theo Prabity 3 1. That's the big series I want to cast to be honest. Some massive games there, but Hulk Smash, who by the way is getting a lot stronger. Really keen to see if he can crack into the final eight. Um, fourth. Has he just been winning all of his games? He has. Yeah, he, well, he lost. He didn't do so well in in ML one. He went two one, and then he lost two nil to Momo. Um, and then down here he had to face Authority and he beat him two nil. But ML two, I think he went on a bit of a decent push, I believe. No, he yeah, lost one two one. Sorry. But he's gotten a lot better, and he's like coming here as one player from like ten years ago, I remember, and he seems to have gotten mm -hmm. a lot better. Beating Bullat is 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 decent. Beating Theo is decent. So Hulk Smash is one to watch. I think in the very last tournament, ML four, 
he might even be able to push his way into the top eight if he's if he wins every series, obviously. Um, so yeah, some interesting stories evolving in the brackets. It's exciting uh, from some some regards. Yeah, we got we might I might cast Inca Alpern tomorrow if I get a chance, or maybe in the week. I'll see. Um, but yeah, it's been good, guys. Thanks for thanks thanks for watching. See, so Orange Pest got the highest MLR now. It should. Uh, Yep, he beats Jibber. Just pips him to the number one seed. Giving him a really nice position for the uh, finals tournament, which is going to be a pretty hefty prize pool. And it's going to be eight people only. Best of five all the way through. Three Saturdays in a row. And just a good good time to be had by all. Uh, a big round of a big thank you to Vulcan, by the way. Go and check him out. He's a fantastic YouTuber. He's got some really cool uh, casting series for Warno and, of course, uh, Steel Division 2. Really cool style. Just People watch him. They don't even bloody play Warno and Steel Division 2. I think he's got more <laughs> viewers than have ever played those games. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Actually. He's got. He's, they're just, they're just bloody <laughs> Vulcan fans. They haven't got that many people playing Steel Division and... Warner. Yeah, we we're cu are currently uh, getting getting ready to cast the finals of the Stir Division League. Actually, that'll be up on my channel soon. Gets the competitive side of Stir Division Two out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll uh, be saying goodbye to Vulcan. I'm going to try and get an interview with Orange Best next. So big thanks to you, Vulcan. Have a good rest of your day, mate. And he'll be yep. streaming later. So go and check him out on Twitch if you want to. Thank you very much for having me. No problem, dude. Catch you later, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, yeah, let's try and get an interview with Orange Pest now. See if he's available. I must remember to ask questions rather than talk too much. Here he is. How are you doing, sir? Uh, I'm doing all right. How was that, how was that serious for you? Hmm? How, uh, congratulations for winning your very first uh, 1v1 tournament. Well done, mate. Technically, it's like okay. We don't count the streamer cup, do we? No, no, it was, <laughs> it, was it was just bad. <laughs> well, well done, mate. Uh, interesting series. Kind of feels like their match. You tried your hardest, and then the allies. You were like, "Oh, I'll just get to my their match." And then game five, you were USF. What the hell um, was going on? Well, I. It wasn't that I wasn't trying. It was also my hardest all those series. It's just. I think when you're looking from the outside in, it mm. looks like you're playing a lot worse because it's like ten times as hard to play as US. True. And than it is for very right now. And also, uh my plan was not to play on Fame and Build in the first place. So I came into that uh those two maps like basically unprepared uh for everything. So I just had to like improvise on the fly. Which is why you saw the the MP40s and like copying Gibber's strategy he did to me in game one, and then the double whisk bang, which yeah. I wanted to convert into Sherman's eventually. Ah, yeah, you wanted to convert them to Sherman's if they had got the veterancy, but you just ran out yeah, of time, like, I suppose. They, they would have eventually, because whisk bangs, people shit on them, but they're actually very decent. Mm. It's just, uh, I was lagging behind, so I couldn't afford the breathing room to tech. Uh, I had also, he had skill planes, which is why the game collapsed in the way it did. Mm. And it's just, I needed something, and I needed to deal with the Jaegers, and I needed to deal with the Stugs, and the Wispang can kind of harass both, and just put him off the VPs and buy me time. Mm. But Versus also, I, was, I mean, yeah. his build order wasn't perfect for Wispangs. he only had two small No, weapons. it wasn't, but like, the doctrine I had, it's it was the the best choice. Basically it wasn't had, a like, bad game. It wasn't a bad game. You, you did your best. And then, so you had, you had faction decision for game five, right? Yeah. Okay. And what did you say to him? Did you say he can choose faction, or did you just choose? No, faction? I picked US. Uh, I because, was gonna. Pick, okay. I, I was debating Verma, but I talked with Napoleon. Mm. I guess he, him, and I would like talk to him. I turn to make games. This is just good to have someone to bounce off ideas off. Like mm. second game was like that was his strategy he gave me essentially, the the two to one play. But yeah. for for that game five, I wanted the. I wanted armor because armor is, in general, I think the best commander in the game by far. Yeah. And the fact that the AC8 comes out the way it does, and the fact that he only had the mechanized ready, mm. which I think his vehicle micro isn't that good. 
which means I can punish him really easily. Mm. Well, you, so there's a great all-in push, dude, with the M8 and the Chaffee. I mean, that won the game, essentially, because he never really got back on the map after that fully. Um, so it's a great well, that's push. that's just the death experience. You make one mistake and then you're dead. <laughs> and even, if you, even if you play one... Give yourself still, some credit. Know. I mean, you did pull in the M8 at the right time. You calculated the... Uh, well, you judged, rather, the situation to be in your favour, so you just stayed stationary with the two vehicles. you got to give yourself some credit, bro. It was a good play. I mean... Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it's it a, was a good play. It was a good it just, play. It just felt like what. Uh, well, I felt like it was more. He made a mistake, and I kind of just didn't let him get away. Get away with it. Why did he go or, dark? Why? Why do you um, think he went dark? I so I assumed. Okay, so I did some spying on him with the code <laughs> three stats. So I knew he thought I was gonna pick Dak at some point, which makes me think he thinks Dak is good in some way. <laughs> but the thing is. The deck build he was doing, out of all the builds you can do, that's probably the worst deck build you can actually do right now, because the Jeep will kill you. Yeah. And me, uh, and like the build I do normally, it's like two P grams half track into mm. eight rad. And even that, it's like you have to play basically perfectly. Yeah. And so I assumed he like, because I knew the I knew the the pants to peel spam was coming because he likes to do pants to peel spam in general. Mm. It's just. You can't contest the map, even no. if you have the numbers advantage. Because the rifles will just walk up to you and win. Well, exactly. They're, even with flamethrowers, they're still quite toppy and long range. So Yeah, and then you get to the late game, it's like double bars. Um, why, just, you know. why Why didn't you guys play on the, the new Twin Beaches that's slightly less... Uh, I, I didn't want to play on it, uh, because I didn't have any practice at all. Oh, um, Jibber, okay. Jibber didn't want to play on it, because apparently it's too dark. So Okay. But it kind of made his position worse because obviously he's fighting against West, but that's no problem. Well, that's that's his own problem. <laughs> he said it first, yeah. and he, he didn't have the VP lead. So. so we've got you, we've got Alper, we've got Jibber, uh, Ray might come back, who knows? We've got a lot of people that are, you know, looking pretty bloody strong for this uh, big tournament in July. Uh, but we've got one more of these things to go. Are you going to try and win that one as well? Are you, is this like the emergence of Orange Pest now? Are you like the new Isilda all of a sudden? What do you? How do you see this going? Uh, I see myself winning everything, yeah. I think that's a natural conclusion. Okay. Just because of the uh, mechanics and the fact that I feel like I'm preparing like actual serious builds a lot of the time. Yeah. It's like some of the builds you're versed to, like he tends to like convince himself that's something really bad it's really good and it's just he's playing it badly mm. which is not which isn't a good mentality when you're running stuff like we did in the final game <laughs> and alpert has a lot of weaknesses i can exploit and those are like my two main like rivals so to speak until someone else like rises up well, so, yeah yeah to be fair it's like the natural order of things in in the um, coming here is two ml ml was you would have been ahead of those guys but I just yeah, it was the same thing in Code Two, except by like the very, very end, where me and Jibber were just about equal. I think. Mm. I think then... Jibber, Jibber can come again. He just needs to not make weird, bloody faction decisions and build yeah, no, that, decisions. It was like in that final game could have been. It could have gone either way. Like if he'd gone for, I think it would have been. Yeah, far more if even. he'd gone Vermat, it would have been a whole different story. What was the faction he had left as Vermat? The one with the tiger, I think. No, no, it's the one with the eight rad, which is. He like, had the eight rad commander in the bag. Yeah, which is crazy. Man. Well, I, I I assumed he was saving it for that game. So he's doing a fame of the. Yeah, so I I mean, don't get me wrong. You still had an excellent chance of winning, and I'm sure you would have uh, possibly won anyway. But it would have been uh, a lot, a lot fairer and more close of a game if he'd gone for 8 rad certainly but well oh, that's, yeah. that's Jibber's just, problem this is, is, is so weak right now you like, <laughs> even like I, I just I, I can't see like a way where you wouldn't with Dak essentially no it, it's so tough it's so easy to mess up and F up and as you say it's, it's in that position where you can't make a mistake just like uh, kind of in Company Heroes 2 at various points how OKW felt like yeah, you could play as OKW, and if you make a mistake, you've kind of lost. As I mean, one of the things too, it's just like you had on tournament pressure, and the fact that it's like game five, and your back is against the wall, kind of, because you just come off a loss. Mm. 
and you've been behind of VP choices and stuff, I feel like you're adding a lot of unnecessary pressure to a very a faction that requires you to basically perform at every stage of the game. Mm. Oh, by the way, another congratulations. Well done for discovering victory points. It seems like you've really like figured out how to clamp down on them now, and you just oh, yeah. you stomp your opponents by not letting them cap them. You used to be opposite to that. You used to ignore victory points and cap fuels only, and now you're yeah. just like, victory points are my new best friend. <laughs> Yeah, Cal 3 forced me to adapt, and the fact that Var is so strong, yeah. the specifics of the amount of commanders you get, I just find that, like, if I can just maintain, if I can do some sort of shock strategy in the early game and just maintain that sort of pressure, mm. it's just so, like, because you, you start panicking the moment you start falling, like, 400, <laughs> 300 VPs, because they, they, it goes down so quickly. It it's, does, yeah. It's it... so much, like, no, it's not even, like, it's pressure. It's just mental pressure because you're you're being forced to make like assaults that you don't want to make, but you have to to like maintain the map. It's technically only twenty percent faster than Co Two, but it feels like two hundred. Oh man, it, it feels way faster than that. Because in Co Two, I would go like we're talking like eight minutes into the game, and I still haven't bothered to like mm -hmm. cap a victory point at times. Yeah, that's how you used to play. Now you've gone the yeah. opposite way around. Yeah, now I have now I have to. I just have to <laughs> adopt the new strategy. Well, well done for adapting, and congratulations again for your very first twenty win. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you soon for the next one, next month. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, see you real soon. It's been an absolute pleasure having you. And uh, and yeah, GG, well played.